Well, we're here at Club Dubbo in the magnificent Dubbo region for the New South Wales State Championships for 23-24. We're getting to the pointy end now of the pairs competition. We have the men's pairs final about to get underway. We have Engadine and Mount Lewis up against each other. That's uh, Jack Lewis and Callum Murray. And they're taking on Ben Winther and Brett Spur. Joining us in commentary, Jason Pinnock. Good afternoon, Jason. Good afternoon, Andrew. Yeah, looking forward to this final. Obviously, we have last year's men's state singles champion involved here in um, Jack Lewis. Both teams have been playing well up to this point. Expecting an absolute cracker. <clears throat> First end about to get underway. Just finishing off the trial end. We've got uh, two Cabramatta teams in finals. Just trying to work out why our scores at the bottom haven't updated. We're getting the semi-final scores there anyway. Uh, I know why. So while these... We have five finals here this afternoon, we do. We are streaming, obviously, the men's state pairs final on the same green next door we have the women's state pairs final played between fig tree and st john's park it's another k moran versus dawn Heyman final k would obviously be looking to get some revenge back on dawny <clears throat> big task big task all right yeah dawny Dawn's going for three yeah she's going for a trifecta we move up to the other green. We have uh, Coromel and Cabramatta in the men's senior pairs. That's uh, Honest John Green and Eric Johannes taking on Gary Corey and Arthur Peasley. Next to that, the Battle Royale for the women senior women's pairs. Uh, Foster and South Tamworth. Colleen Star, Joan Thomas... Up against Carol White and Chris Myers. And the reserve pairs is uh, Bar Beach and Cabramatta. And my memory's failed me on the Bar Beach names. Ooh. <laughs> I can uh, quickly rectify that. Chart. Steve Clark from Bar Beach up against Bill Hopley from Cabramatta. So that's our five finals, but also around on Grain 3, we're starting to see some singles players rolling in. A couple out there having roll-ups already, trying to get used to the conditions. Obviously, tomorrow morning, our singles disciplines kick off across the three clubs. Some great matches coming up there as well. And we've got a really easy way to tell who's who in this game. The green bowls, both the Engadine players. Fantastic. Going to make an easier call for us, mate. <laughs> we need to make it easy as we can, don't we? Well, both leads have jumped pretty much straight on it. This will be a really good game. See Jack here just getting out on a slightly wider line here. Giving it a chance to pull all the way back. Pretty good weight. So, already four, what I would call, very effective bowls. 
to start this final. Well, Bold turned it up. Probably has a little unfortunate with that result. Uh, just opens up the chance for Callum to reach down on the backhand. Positive draw, nothing to flash. Chance to sit that bowl, but first prize just nudge that Jack back towards Jack's bowl. Maybe we need to call it a kitty this game as well. Just a little over the weight required. again just gets under that just turned a bit too much so already we're seeing that forehand here just got that little bit more swoop than the backhand this is a fairly aggressive line here from Jack not sure he'll hold up let's just back edge that and get unfortunate but still on there it's uh well so it could be three there to Mount Lewis this early on, but still a lot of bowls to come in this end. line but coming to a good home if it stays up just yeah just fell into the ditch so unlucky obviously just trying to get that catcher in behind early the set up at this head you know that Engadine are going to be pushing into it Jack here edge off of that oh flops out so only one down now You still might see a cover bowl, yeah. So let's look at it. Glitch of the Facebook feed. Yeah, Jack turned his back on that one pretty early. Just underdone his grass a little bit there. Just looking to turn that bowl of Benny Winthers in. So Callum on an aggressive line here, just wanting it to come back, but we're just seeing there with weight, they're just staying out a little bit. 
Would be a little bit of difference in the line too. They played the opposite direction this morning. Yeah, so first end still trying to feel things a bit. He can get a result this way. There is a danger that he turns the green bowl up to B shot. Not with that line. Well, Andrew, there's an opportunity. If Jack right goes right, he gets down to this back green one, he could make three. Three or four. Yep. Just a nice weight onto the shot bowl. Get the inside-ish and get the jack across to the left of screen. Oh, that's a very aggressive line. He needs a lot of weight on this to hold. Well, his last one held quite well, too. He is holding, all right. Oh, just going now, but... Oh, got it through without any jack. Oh, he oh, might have flopped well. back. Well, <laughs> wow. No, I think he's got shot. He's yeah, handed it over. Yeah. It is one to Engadine, so... Well, it's a nice close start anyway. Perhaps a little bit of luck involved there. Luck starts when you reach, mate. <laughs> well, you gave it a chance. That's the big thing. An excellent start by both leads. You'd have to be Captain Cranky Pants to criticise them for being shorts, short with those bowls. They're in the effective range. Little tickle on this. Oh, great leading there. Any winter. Not a bad answer. Not a bad answer at all. Get some jack. Yeah, I'm going to favour that Benny Winter bowl for shot. So already early in this game, we're seeing a lot of jack movement. Aggressive play to get the shot early. I'm on a pretty good track here. It's just a matter if he runs this and not quite. Brett's given this a lot of width, so... But look at that really late there, Andrew. It actually... Started really pulling back. Um, we've seen others just holding there. So it's an interesting line. It's a lot tighter. He's got better weight from his first though. So is it too much? Yeah, it is. Mm. It'll stop. <laughs> the sand stops him every time. Obviously, he wanted to give it a chance after being that six foot short with his first, so. Well, you're not going to score if you're six feet short, but if you are that weight and you thump it into the ditch. Brett Spur. 
just like this. Wow, what a great bowl. Jack in the pit, toucher on the edge. He probably he wanted that to go in the ditch with it. But it's that close to the edge of the ditch, I don't see it moving too far away. <laughs> well, he's two though, that's the thing. He is two, that's correct. It's probably a little just a little way off the ditch there actually. Just Looks right on the edge of our shot, but that's the camera angle. I see some aggression up early up here for Jack, I think. Might look for his own toucher. He might have just cleared a path there by hitting into that one. Benny Winter, yes, just gets past there. Winter, sorry, not Winter. So three shots there now. Seeing some heavy aggression here. Jack making contact, got one of them. So still two here to Mount Lewis. Benny can just turn that Brett Spur bowl in would be great. He gets an edge off that front one, so back to three. Aggression here. It's on a draw line here, Callum is. So. Yeah, really three good. down. He probably didn't want to risk it, but hard four to, down maybe. Hard to draw that even. I, hard to draw even third shot. Go for a whack and hope you all clear all three. Big chance to get two of them there. True. Which is probably what he wanted Jack doing beforehand, but... Probably a lot harder for him to get all three now. If he pushes, that one could count. As we see, the bottom left-hand side there, see the little blue marker? That's where the jack is in the ditch. So, well, it actually could be five there, Andrew. Yeah, and the thing is, he goes bigs now. He could get both yeah. of his own and leave a, a three-metre draw. Tough shot either way. Has he got the run up here? Just needs to run another, another foot. Oh, he, that's all he wanted there to really cut that count down. But I'm not sure he's cut any out. Might have cut one out actually. You saw the call from Ben Winther. Just draw past your own. Give you a wider view, pull the graphics off the screen for this last delivery. Really, just needs to get past that last bowl. Yeah, he's played it wide enough not to... But uh, just a little bit on the excitement side. So they're going to... 
actually given him them too. So I actually thought the short white one there may not have counted. And that was from looking out That's the window. That's five already. Six, I think, was indicated. Looked like Jack had two hands indicating the shot score, but... Can you see the scoreboard? Unfortunately, the Triple M tent's now in front of me, so... <laughs> <laughs> if I stand up, yeah, it is a six. So it's six one now on two ends. So, what a way to open up your account with a six. In a final of a state championship. Well, they were unlucky to go down last end and then pick up six. Hey, Benny Winter, well down here. <clears throat> Great shooting there by Ben. He's really had his opening two bowls in really good areas to, to uh, set the ends up for the Mount Lewis side. So we see uh, Jack Lewis just wanting to pull back a little bit further. Not quite. Well, it did. It come all the way through, but uh, finishes in a good home. Good line here. Playing a cover bowl in behind. Always handy there.
been about that length short there. Still holding the one, Mount Lewis. Jack probably wanted to be under there. Probably was searching for the Jack underneath that short Mount Lewis bowl. Just got himself a bit out there, a bit wide. Ben looking for that two foot on his last. He's Pretty close. Done that. Wants it to fall. I think it counts. High fives there amongst the Mount Lewis boys, so. Okay. Jack just wanting to. So he got one out by the look of that. I think it's only one to the Mount Lewis team. I think the second wood is the Engadine Bowl in the green just behind. So as Andrew mentioned earlier, we Engadine have got the green or aqua colour bowls. Mount Lewis are the white as well as the white and we'll say black just for because that's what it looks like on the screen. <coughs> Brett would be wanting to get back to that second wood just going past. So gives himself a feel of it and hopefully second bowl he'll adjust, adjust and get to it. But um, let's see what Callum can come up with here. Looks a little underdone, but yeah. Just wondered maybe if that might have made two now. Because the camera angle is quite deceiving, that back bowl could be further behind than we are actually seeing on the screen. So we can now see the uh, live scores, live scores coming through from the other games. A uh, couple of little glitches, and Andrew's working furiously overtime here, fixing it all. Hence why. He's gone very quiet. <laughs> yeah, it just a, seems to be colour's gone a bit weird on one of our cameras. Ben had the same thing happen this morning too, actually. Just tried re resetting the image settings and it uh, made it weirder. <laughs> Two main cameras are working well though, so... Around the grounds, I can't see the open women's score here. Myself, one all on two. Okay, so it does match what's on screen. Look in the men's senior final at the moment. It is two nil to Coromel on two. In the women's senior final, it is four nil to Foster after two. And no score has been put up for the reserves yet, so... Keep an eye on those live scores down the bottom right-hand side. Looks like it'll be one to Mount Lewis. Hands the check over. Yep, one it is. Handy lead this early stage.
from Benny Winther. First bowl again, right on the money. He might be good enough to make the zone one side if he moved up there, Jason. <laughs> dig, dig. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be uh, somewhat of a walking starter. Uh, not hard, not easy to do. Current state champions, but with form like this, <laughs> standard slipped a bit for this year, though, hasn't it, Jason? I'll let anybody uh, have a game. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes, well, we have lost a couple of players from last year's state champs, and I won't lie, these... Yeah. Under pressure? Troy Macon in particular, obviously, with some family commitments. It is. It does leave a hole in the side. Troy's figures heavily in our zone competitions and zone side, and his contribution to the zone side is... Uh, Got the triple threat to take his place, though, haven't you? Oh, sorry, the triple M to take his place. <laughs> Andrew's got his, he's got his uh, funny clothes on today, so here to entertain. Well, Brett Spur, forehand draw. So I'm saying, wouldn't mind just getting a little piece of this jack or the bowl. Well, yeah. he's done that. Got the. Sat next to it, but... Tried to tidy it up, and I think he's just made it a little bit tighter, but that shot's still there for Ingerdeen to play. Same by the ear. I've got to say, Mount Lewis at this stage has the head position, though. Jack's just going to get the flick and run past. He's yeah. made it a little more difficult for himself. Well, Benny says to Brett, I think you better just get some coverage out on the backhand side now. Small target. And if he gets that jack and the ball at the same time, he's likely to to not go with it. Urging that one on. I don't think he needs to. It's come nah. to a pretty good home. Yeah, turning well down that side. I didn't want to cross line at all, so yeah, it's finished perfectly just about, actually. I just wonder if that might be worth Mount Lewis playing Ingerdine's shot now. Oh. Not now. That one's just going to be in the catching wow. pen. Would you would you call a shot to say come between the, the jack and that green bowl to sit the other white one? I don't think you'd see it happening. Nah. Well, just a reminder for all of the ladies watching on. Women's State Carnival, don't miss out. Entries close today. Jump on the Bowls New South Wales website, point your mouse at events. That's bowlsnsw.com.au. Point your mouse at events, annual competitions, state carnival there, entry through bowls link. Uh, you've got about an hour and a half to call the Bowls New South Wales office, so tad more if you're having troubles entering. And, of course, you don't have to be a New South Wales bowler to play in that one. That's open to any bowler. Lovely region, the foster Tun Curry area, the Manning Great Lakes region. Always get a thrill, and I'm not a real water person. Coming over that big bridge from Tuncurry into Foster and the beautiful blue water. One of the most fun tournaments, and that's probably why we have around 230-odd teams in it already. Massive event. Your chance to be part of the fun. Don't miss out. And, well, Brady didn't miss out then. I think he's in for another counter. Yeah, it's... Looking quite well. What's he going to do there? He's got that pushed up, so it's only one now. I was going to say things are building up and uh, in Mount Lewis's favour a lot. So Engadine really needs to knuckle down, get some more effective bowls in, in better areas. Don't want this lead blowing out anymore. 
you know, this calibre of uh, players at this level, they get themselves that double shot lead. They know how to manage the game from there and, and hold hold their nerve to the end. So important to keep it tight. See Brett just coming down here. If he can turn his down, great bowl. Put in a very good home. Hard for Jack to get across. That still can, but expect to see a little more aggression here this time, and I think that's what's happened. But I think that side it might just hang a little bit. Oh, well, he's got. A reasonable result though he's got rid of their second or their the, the closest Mount Lewis next shot he's probably got two two third woods now I'd imagine Brett will be looking at a similar bowl if not getting right on top of Jack in front he has got the best back bowls Again, putting some of that number pressure back onto the opposition. A third one also makes a difference here because there would be a chance to get both with a running shot. He just wants to run a little more. He wants this to count. Well, might not have, but visually it'd be looking different now up there for Callum. Yeah, not quite as open. Has to be a lot more precise here now. We saw him slightly wide with his first. Let's see if he's adjusted. He's narrow. He really Another lost a two. Lot. Yeah, he really lost a lot of weight there, didn't he? But that could have been because his first one he had the weight on and it held, so he wanted to back the weight off and let, give it that chance to turn. But so we're out to nine one now to Mount Lewis. Early days we know. And can be really wanting to rally here and, and win this next end. First bowl, very good starter. Just what they've been up wanting. Little touch. See on the bottom right hand side there. Next door in the women's final. It is three all after four. Benny Winther has <laughs> Great reply there. Wow, he's been really good so far, Ben, up front. Comments asking if it's windy there in Dubbo. Well, compared to this morning, the flags are basically dead still. It's probably some of the best conditions I've actually seen this week for a game of bowls. Basically not a breath of wind. So... Callum 
just looking to arrive, make some contact in there. Oh, I just want another, you know, foot on that. Two foot, probably. Positional bowl here, looking at Benny's left foot there, put it in a position. <laughs> Benny just indicates to Brett, you're a bit wide, mate. <laughs> he was a bowl wide. <laughs> Great bowl. So they're thinking if there's contact on their front bowl, that's the direction that Jack's going to take. Callum Murray short. Two bowls short when he's down. It's surprising. I think I managed to do a little bit with that camera. I've reset it. Looks a bit better now. So, wait here from Jack. Oh, Got rid of one. Does two. Playing superb. Well, at this rate, Engadine looked to be in a spot of bother, but they just seem to be hanging on. Still 9 1 down after only four ends, though, aren't they? Yeah. Well, it's all from Benny Winther. He's just... Peppering it. Apps. Yeah, he is. If he's not getting the shot, he's getting very good effective bowls in, in an area that Brett's wanted him to, so... around the grounds um, it is three all in the ladies state pairs final men's seniors just looking out the window it is Coromel up 5-1 over Cabramatta after four ends in the women's seniors we have a score of Five, six after six ends. So South Tamworth five, Foster six after six ends. And in the reserves, there's someone just standing in front of it. Let's wait for him to move. Eight nil. Nine nil. Nine nil. No, I think it's eight. Eight nil after two. This two, it's saying eight nil after two ends in favour of. I think that. Well, they're both blue. That's the yeah. issue. 
We'll see what comes up on our we screen. Might, we might get someone to go out there and just double check who's on the left and right. Uh, Bar Beach should be on the left. Okay, so Bar Beach are on the left. So it's 8-0 to Cabramatta in the reserves after two ends out there. Someone's commenting. They must be here. It's saying, they're saying it's 13-0 after three. That doesn't indicate on the scoreboard, so... Thanks for that update. Wait for the scoreboards to be turned over, but yeah, at the moment saying eight nil in those reserves after two. Wow, it's turned into the Benny Winther show. This is just superb leading by Benny Winther. Jack Lewis, he's close here. Just turns it over. Great ball. Didn't get the shot, but open it back up. Give him a chance. So that last end was a two, wasn't it? I think I'm two behind. That's, yeah, scoreboard says 11-1 on five. It's that little technical issue trying to overcome it. Just needs to hold here. He's just going to duck under, but may have got shot there. Oh, just fell out, but good set up. Just had to give it a kick. <laughs> We are due for a major software upgrade. <laughs> Hopefully that will make things a lot more simple. Sliding on past there. We want it just to be a little bit narrow. He would have got that nice trail back to the other two Engadine bowls. Brett will point it a little bit short, but. Changes the visual look at it up the front. So must be around that short bowl now and Callum is. Another one in behind, so Engadine. Three behind there. But probably two down on the head at this stage. See Ben out here. It's on a wide line, but they are swinging home out down this side. Just not quite up, but. And 
the Engadine boys just skirting on around. Maybe they just need to get back to drawing the jack. They've played the, they've been playing a lot of them little couple of feet on shots. There's a good draw on there for the shot. Just get one and move forward. Get another one, move forward. Just trying to wrestle this momentum away from Mount Lewis. Just feel like they're trying to get a multiple early on to try and close the gap quicker. Okay. Jack's well down here. He has adjusted his weight better. He wants to get up. He's disappointed. But needed one more roll for the shot. Yeah, Benny wanting some cover at the back still. Three green bowls there at the back. that cover ball. He might have wanted to just push past that green a little bit further, but... I've seen some aggression here from Callum. It is the swinging hand. Will it hold? It's got the front one. And one of his green ones out, Bart. That's another green one at the back, so... Jack straight down the line. It's four shots. Dean, so I imagine Brett will be looking for another cover bowl in there. As long as he gets the most back, well, he has got it back further than his first, so even if they get it, it's definitely not going to be the four or five, but Callum's gone really skinny with that one. So, I think the indication was two. Just not sure. Score attendance done it. Yes, so 13 1 on six. Engadine need to get to work and quickly. Yes, they're running out of time. Benny Winther with another great start of bowl. <laughs> Right up to it here, Jack is. Great bowl, Jack. Drawing it. Moved it a little bit. Makes it hard to get to, so good start. Ingerdine will be wanting to build on this now. Ingerdeen's, maybe that's the turning point, getting that shot there. Can 
they hold it? That's the question. The way uh, Benny and Brett have been. Don't imagine it will all stay there like that. Good home with his opening. So we have a few comments coming in. What's the update score on the ladies? The update score is as per... 3-3-4. Three, 3-3 three, three, three on 4. So ladies out there are analysing heads. There may have been a dead end. I am unsure, but definitely tell you that the scoreboard is reflecting what's on our screens. As is all matches as I look out there and look at the screens. All matches are now exactly up to date as per the screens. So it's not a bad setup there now, like for Mount Lewis to be a little bit aggressive, obviously. Jack sort of lined up to go towards Engadine's back bowl, but Yeah, so Callum getting another one around there. The chance that the Engadine Bowl can go out without any jack movement as well. Benny's just trying to get into this pocket here. If he can find the gap there, he can get the jack neat. Oh, he just got that little bit of his first bowl, but... Well, he wanted that one. He either wanted to miss it or get it absolutely flush to push yep. it on. By the same token, if he was a tad wide and got the inside edge of his own bowl, could have quite easily run across and picked up the jack. Well, that might have changed the shot for Brett. Gets the inside edge of the green one. Oh, he's very unlucky. Yeah. Unlucky, but maybe the little bit of luck that Engadine need. Well, he's just got a dead draw. Dead draw. Get back. Get to the Benny Winther bowl at the back is a really good position as well. May not count there, but if there's going to be some aggression here at all from Mount Lewis, well... Yep, there'll be a little bit of weight here. The thump and run, trying to turn their own bowl onto their own bowl, onto the shot bowl, and squeeze that jack back straight down the line to their awaiting Ben Winter bowl, or as it would be called on one of my former pennant rinks, the old Rhino Trap Shot. Just going to be a little shy of grass for that shot. Won't mind where he's turned that one to. I don't think that'll come into play. For Jack, let's try and 
pop another one in that catching pan, even draw that back one. He's just forgotten something as well. Not sure big aggression is the way to go, but he may be tempted to put a little more weight on this. Certainly got more grass. Will it bend back quickly enough? Yeah. Out of blunt, so won't find out where it would have went. B two, maybe three. He can get an edge off of that, and he has. Well, did it pull up enough? Yes. It's three indicated there by Jack. So discussion here, as we would expect. Well, they've quadrupled their score. Is that the Sido's Rhino, is it? It is. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try something a little funky here. I'm still not happy with that camera. So I could shut down both of our other cameras, but we'll see what happens. Oh, I had a very good guess. Unplug the right one. <laughs> So we're seeing a shorter length here thrown by Engadine. Just looking at them scores filtering through. They're all pretty well up to date looking at it. 13 twos correct there. Four alls correct there. Coromore's 5 1. No, so that's it's actually 5 6 to Cabramatta there. So it'll be updated again soon. And the South Tower Senior Ladies, that's correct score there. Foster still up 9 6 as well. So well, I may have done something very bad. <laughs> camera is very well positioned Jason I think it's off center sit on those bowls, just went through the gap. Finishes in a good home again though. So, nearly seeing green three out here. Nearly all rinks are taken up with roll-ups. Singles players coming into the venue, getting ready for tomorrow's play. Tomorrow we start our Bowls New South Wales State Championship singles disciplines across the three venues. Oh, all the bowls 
on one side of the green there taking a little too much or not enough just ran through a little I think it's uh, Mount Lewis holding at this stage Apologies, our scores have just dropped off as well. All sorts of little technical issues happening at the moment. So our updating scoreboard should come back in just a moment. Lee Stinson joins us for a little stint. Afternoon, Andrew. Afternoon, everyone watching along. Jason just came and gave me a quick tap on the shoulder. See if I could jump in for a moment while he tries to fix a couple of things outside with the equipment. Well, he's turned that one in for a definite shot. I think it's actually three there, the signal. It's just going to slide through. It's been the story of the day so far. It's been Mount Lewis dominant. And getting the one and the three. Another five ends for a total of 13, including one big count to Mount Lewis. Sees them with that handy lead. So we're having some dramas with our other scoreboards. Do a quick around the grounds from our vantage point here in the commentary box. Senior men's pairs. Six ends played. Cabramatta leading Coromel. Six shots to five. Senior women's pairs. There's eight ends completed there. Foster lead South Tamworth. Nine shots to six. The Open Reserve have completed four ends of play. It's Cabramatta 13, leading Bar Beach 2. And open women's pair, six ends completed, four shots all. Fig Tree Sports and St John's Park. Just a little short there from Callum. Chance for Brett Spur to add another one to hold a count of four. And he playing that side where it's all loaded up knowing that they're not giving any more target not enough speed to do any damage whatever you might try a bit of a fun run up the middle he's got dead draw backhand uh, I think Jack's talked him into that draw shot he might have oh. tried to take his chances up the front but going to try and draw it well you plough into that front they're all going towards the shots aren't they even a backhand quick runner. If this he is that the last control ball. the jack or sit the shot ball. Oh, there it is. Well, that's why he played it. Yeah, back Give to it every chance. Correct. Might have turned three down to two up. Yeah, super shot there from Callum. See this bowl coming to view in a moment. There it is. Very good weight. Probably second shot. And our thirteen five sheet has decided it's going to use the wrong data. Once again, plenty of people around the greens here at Club Dubbo watching on. So just the one then? Just the Lee. one. Five finals in action this afternoon. I've seen a few players start to arrive at the club practising for singles competition. No doubt that's going on also at the Macquarie Club and North Dubbo RSL Sporties. As people begin to prepare for... Play to commence tomorrow morning in singles. Uh, 
Anyone else like myself, Andrew, who's just joined us and have only seen a few ends, or a few bowls, sorry, I've only seen a f second half of that eighth end. What's been happening so far? Who's the star performer? Benny Winther. He has given them the absolute advantage in the first few ends just by peppering the jack with his opening bowls. And we've commentator cursed him. He uh, absolutely dominated in the first two bowls early on, especially in the first two bowls. Any specific length of end that the team was playing? Uh, not really sure, because I was trying to get all our cameras and gear to work. Uh, fair enough. So, Benny down his backhand here again. Anything that beats his own or passes it will help. Our centre camera was just um, a bit weird. So we did a reboot. Yeah, we had some issues with that one this morning. And it wouldn't start again. So Jason's just run out. Did the the very technical unplug and replug. Seems to have given it the little kick it needed. I was assigned that very important task this morning. I think I got three people give me a round of applause when I went out to do that. Well, that's, that's an improvement, isn't it? You got a round of applause. Oh, I did well. Usually get the jeers. Just dropping on the line. It's my first real look at this rink uh, throughout the state championships. So, they have a pretty good draw on both sides, considering the little over three inches of rain we've had here in Dubbo over the last four days. So for those non-metric, you're talking around about 76.2 mil. Or oh, just over, yeah, something like that. Mount Lewis, they're holding two or three. Rather Engadine holding at the moment. Yeah, the, the other team with the green on their uniforms. The uh, mostly green uniforms are using the white bowls and the more black uniforms are using the, white bo uh, the green bowls. Shot there from Spurry. That will be second. Chance here, though, for Engadine to stick with that side of the green. Follow Brett down. They're a little heavy. They can roll him f once for a, to get back to a couple, but ideally, you're just drawing a toucher, covering that jack up. You might bring the other two in as well. For me, it, it's, I just poke it down there and hope that one of those things happens as I sail somewhere near the head. Jack urging this one forward. Must be really close to the jack here. Oh, oh, fantastic it. effort. Good oh. shot. Jack Lewis, well played. Creates a fairly broad-looking target, though, doesn't it? Yeah, I think even if they miss and get their own bowl here, they're going to back themselves four consecutive times to make contact here. Any contact on anything there has got the potential for a decent result. Working across to his own here. What? Nelly. Touch up. Needed here from Jack. Turn the turn it in behind his green bowls. Very happy. Same line. Half a metre more weight. Does not need to do much different from his previous bowl, does he? That's about where it came from last time. He's got the toucher. I think well, he's, he's moved the jack yeah. all of about one nanometre. It does mean if Ben gets it nicely, you won't be able to follow it all the way through. This is making contact with the shot balls and run across to the jack. Well. That's going to be one to Engadine. Good shot. A little chance here, though, for Callum. Be surprised to see him turn to his backhand. Push the jack through the hole, and all of those bowls just behind the jack. Just over the draw. 
Uh, you can afford to play a metre, metre and a half even. Get a couple of turns out of the bowl. Give yourself a chance to either get the jack in running or if you do lose a bit of pace after hitting the opposition bowl and then run onto the jack that you still get the good result. Ideally coming off the white bowl. Yeah, just on the inside of the jack, if anything. Jeez, it's really good speed. That's another one there in that catching area. Well, and not a lot here for Spurry to play that doesn't involve danger. Would you be half tempted to have a whack at that and see if he could kill? Only danger may be you could get the two whites and the closest Angadine bowl. Get in between the two whites, there could be a chance that the one in his hand gets bends out as well and comes across and gets his own. Would lose an Engadine bowl, however, Engadine would still have the next four. I think they're, they're looking to, to cover that up. If you're going for a Saturday morning chook run effort, you could play a yard or two on your forehand and look to thump your own ball onto it and stay but wow I, I think that would be fraught with danger He's trying to find the spot to get to. He's going to go firm. Like I said, there's really one unlucky result. Anything else probably leaves at least one of his own bowls in there. He's got the gap. Get a couple out. It's going to help. Well, that's actually a big result. Three of the green bowls have gone. Could have been six or seven down after the next bowl had he not removed those. So I'd actually be happy with that result. Yeah, next best thing. Callum, perfect weight as we said last time. Just bring the line in by two bowls width. Inside of the jack. I just want to get enough of the jack that it gets behind Ben Winther's zebra coloured bowl at the front. You don't want to move it only a few centimetres off centre line. Even if you're holding four, it would be an almighty target to hit, so... Very similar weight to his last. If you get the jack direct or get it off the white bowl, he's played this nicely. Bowl then jack. Well played, Callum. Yeah, as we said, it went a bit further than keeping all these bowls in nice and close. Just as Lee called. However, no target whatsoever. So there is one Mount Lewis bowl just underneath the scoreboard, the rolling scoreboard down the bottom. Just... And the end of where the word Cabra Matter is written at the moment. Can't see it for a body now. There we go. Oh, it's at least two to Angadine. I think it might be four. I've just got to run the full journey now, and this will be shot, and it is. Uh, be happy enough to make them play those shots. This one of Callum's got the jack behind the pack, which is what he really needed. Ideally, it stops maybe 30 centimetres less just on the other side of that cross black line there, but still put the opposition under pressure. Made four. One to Mount Lewis to go onto our scoreboard. And 
Once again, the same tune. Benny Winther has gone plonk. Very technical term, that one, Jason. <laughs> uh, Lee's had to duck back out and do some more work. Busy man he is. <laughs> uh, I've got to have a little laugh there. You know he's busy out there today. Yeah, I know he's busy, but I still have, <laughs> I still have to have a stir. Yeah, so just give me a quick 10-minute break. Did the technical duties. Oh, I know how bit Lee Busy is, <laughs> because Busy is me too. <laughs> so we're seeing Benny Winther again, after Lee Bowles holding shot. He's been superb, Andrew, he has. He's, he, he's, he's, he's set the head up for, for Brett every single end, and couple of times when they've been in a little bit of trouble he's been able to play those weighted shots too and and change things so um i was just out in amongst the crowd out there the massive crowd in the club itself you're adoring fans <laughs> and um common consensus amongst all the fans out there watching is that uh benny winther is man of the match so far so and very well deserved it's not such a big call, though, is it? No, but look at this. Callum Murray runs up, rolls it out. Great bowl, Callum. One, two, Engadine. Well, they're starting to put a little bit more fight into this. Not that they were playing all that bad before. They just weren't getting the right angles and just not quite in the right spot. Brett Spur, probably the least conducive head he's had in a while. Big save last end. Really, what do you want to do? Get them out. Oh, it's Benny Winther back on the mat again now. Yeah. Get one down in that area. Not quite what he was after this time. Uncharacteristic bowl for Benny in this final. Well, a bit of commentary curse, I think, too. <laughs> I said earlier that the wind is, uh, there was none. It has picked up now. A bit going through the flags. And completely changed direction from this morning. So on our screen, it is moving from left to right, the wind is. Yes. I often find I need to have three looks when someone says what way is the wind going. We can even see the camera movement out there. Yeah, a little bit of breeze under the head of the camera on the tripod. All right, Jack just yeah, throwing his hands and that hand has been predominantly quite quite tight down there. But with that wind picking up, it's changing the characteristics characteristics of the green out there. It's still one day green. I wouldn't be surprised to see Engadine try play the forehand side of the green so that's the left as we look at it there's a nice little channel in towards that shot bowl really wouldn't want to turn it too much but if you lay it down a little bit it's not going to hurt you Which Mount Lewis 
Nice draw down to it. If they get a little touch around the corner, they can make two. So even with that win, we're seeing those bowls still coming back into the wind. Yep, that's the hand he's playing. Just got to hold on now. Yeah, Good enough for a second. Go. That's two. Three of your own. The old... Slash and burn. A good weight up into those and hope that you can and one straight onto the shot bowl or get a little run yourself. Inside edge of that one might... Oh. He's close, but no banana. Two shots. Nice draw on that forehand side. Again, draw a touch he'll make four. Yeah, important bowl here. He really wants to count. You get these opportunities, especially with that margin. Just to swing in underneath that port. Not going to get through. Oh, he's not, not giving it a chance, really. Two to the Mount Lewis opposition. Ingerdine. Really getting tongue-tied today. <laughs> what are we, day 12? Something like that. As I'm looking outside, uh, some updated scores. I s the South Tamworth ladies have fought back and in the senior women's. And it's now 10 all after 12. In the senior men's, Coromel are out to an 11-6 lead after 8. And in the reserves, it is still 14-3 in favour of Cabramatta. All the other scores on our screen are correct. <coughs> I've already kicked the machine three times. It's done a couple of weird things today. It did decide to revert back to the mixed pair scores. How it did that, I don't know. A few gremlins creeping in, mate. Yeah, we're due for a little upgrade. A refresh of the gear. Our computer is uh, five, six years old. Not quite sure what that is in dog years. <laughs> Do we see Jack Lewis just starting to, well, even win the lead battle at the moment over the last end or so? Seven the difference, 11 ends remaining. Does he like it? I don't think he does. They're sort of just, yeah, but it's not too bad a result. Well, Brett Spur looks pretty good to hear. Certainly got Benny's interest. Wants a little straighten. Oh, he oh. didn't get anything. Just that little bit of weight. Straight and uh, just shaved the weight off and got him close. So Jack Hill, sorry, Callum, will be drawing down to try and get inside Benny Winther's bowl on the right of screen. You see Jack urging that one on. It does make it a little more challenging for the Lions. The Battle of the Cats, the Cougars and the Lions.
which one's got sharper claws. Quite congested looking the path towards that jack now. their own bowls here or not sure oh, oh tragedy that is a tragedy He's oh Engadine bowl I mean the Mount Lewis bowl on the jack across the other one so he's two down now and worse he's probably made the draw here for Mount Lewis even better Benny can really make this difficult for Engadine just stop. Oh, very yeah, well bowled. Very well bowled. So it's three shots now. Let's see if Jack can redeem himself. He's, he's out on a good line. Will it come back, though? Yeah, give it every chance with weight. Benny, rinse and repeat, your last bowl. He's close to Andrew. Uh, Sperry likes it. Just yeah. slow down, but Benny that's Winter. nearly perfect. Look at that. Yes, Tell the me. jack got moved across there, but there's four Benny Winther bowls. You can put a mat over the top and you still wouldn't see him. Is that, that your uh, shade cloth there, mate? Because it's got <laughs> triple M on it. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> For those who don't know, Jason got slugged with the nickname of Triple M, the male model from McLean. <laughs> Boys are uh, BA staff mates, and it seems to have stuck. Uh. Well, I didn't mind that effort from Cal. Just a little bit through the head. I'm smart effort here too, saying that let's draw out here. Because they do hit our bowls, it squirts out and we can drop a few. Yeah. Smart play, obviously. <clears throat> Seven ahead, holding four. Positional play now, so you don't drop a big number. Should they get in there? Uh, a very important bowl for the Cougars. Oh, this is weight just dependent. Not flicked out a little bit. So now, chance to add five. Be a very telling end here, Andrew. Going into the back half of our pairs final. Could be a 19-7 lead. 12 shots with only 10 ends to go. Not... It's not a quite uh, sell the back pet steps stage. Kick the dog even. But it's... We need to do something in a hurry. Very difficult at this level, isn't it? Especially if Benny Winther keeps bowling like he has been. Oh. And Brett Spur, I think he's done it. It's five. Just about drawing the absolute. Five shots to Mount Lewis. Nineteen to seven. Well, the fight back was on, but Mount Lewis have quickly put a stamp on it. Somewhat unlucky bowl by Jack. Getting the Mount Lewis bowl into the head and moving Jack out. But Common theme in the length that the Mount Lewis duo are playing. Have you noticed that? Jack's rolling the Jack towards the tee. 
Yes, they might be playing with the mat length a little bit, but the Jack is getting up on that T mark a lot of the time when Benny Wynth is leading off. So. And another great start there. Oh, good answer. He's under pressure to do it as well. We reminded you that the women's state card entries close tonight. Pretty good effort from Benny with the real. He's got two in very good position. It's up to Jack now. Needs to get past real. He's got a spur bowl with his first. And, uh, well, it's a good bad bowl. Or a bad yeah. good bowl. He knows it too. Lovely shot there now. Just positive draw. Either hand. There is a gap, but you'd be unlucky to go through it. Just a reminder, like and share any of the Bowls New South Wales streams or posts from the 23-24 state championships to win your share of prizes worth over $5,000 in partnership with Sharp EIT Solutions. Terms and conditions apply. Jump on the Bowls New South Wales website to find those. There's a 70-inch TV and a 40-inch touchscreen. State-of-the-art printers and microwaves to be won. Very good prizes, so get in, hit that like button, share this post. So Brett just laid the Yangadine bowl down there, but probably makes for a bigger target if anything. Just got a fade underneath this one. The problem for Engadine is they, they can't even afford to trail that Jack and try and hide it. They've got to play very precisely. Whereas Mount Lewis, let's just trundle up somewhere near the head. We've got both behind. Very close. Pick this here. Jack out of the middle. Straight down the line. Got a little hit off of that. So touch her in the ditch. Mount Lewis just have an answer for absolutely everything. Where's the toucher? That's the big question. Is it closer than that? Oh. It must be the way. Yep, one down is one the down. signal. <laughs> well, if you're Mount Lewis, do you now go, well, if you beat our toucher in the ditch, good on you. Do you try and just roll their balls in each time and stay? Or do you back them to draw within that metre and a bit with the last... The way Benny Wynth has been drawn, he'll, go, he'll draw two here. He'll make it three after this. Be cool. Yeah. I don't mind being wrong in my calls, but just looking at the way he's been playing, it wouldn't surprise me. Well, he just needs to get close. I think what you do is you try and load this up, put the pressure on. Engadine to get another one close. You've got the next three now. Get the shot. Comments coming through the feed. Please update scores. All scores are updated on our live scoring at the bottom right. It's just some games are running a little slow. They are finals. There's discussions being had between teams. So just right. going through those. Sorry, Andrew. That's a fair effort there. It's a third shot. Fourth shot. Doesn't mean the Engadine bowl's not worth anything now. Might be worth one, but... 
Mate, you back Benny to draw two more, and he's not gone far away from it. Does get third. Well, that wasn't either us huffing and puffing. It's Lee joining us. He wanted to announce himself here, but he'd been out to the zoo and watched the rhinos, and he thought he'd give it the big snort like they do. <laughs> Fantastic effort. Not sure he's got shot there, but limit the damage anyway. At 19 to 7 after 11 ends. You really do need to score, though. Yeah, comments still coming through about updated scores. They are updated, just to let you know. Again, obviously their finals, lots of conversation being had between the ends and that. So scores are currently updated as per the scoreboards on our live screen score at the bottom right-hand side. One or two ends more maybe completed that the, the team are just updating as we speak. So... Look over in the senior women's event as we see a drive here. Oh, a couple of bowls getting knocked in. Senior women's pairs. I can let you know that South Tamworth have taken the lead. 14 out of 21 ends played. They lead Foster 12 shots to 11. And it's a further three shots scored by Coromel over their last two ends. They're out now to 14 6 after 10 ends. Another weighted shot here, Brett Spur. Close to that back bowl. Got He's it. Got it, perfect. Did he make three of that now? Close Definitely to two. it. Favour the bowl closest to the bank, but to the ditch. Yeah, I'm not sure that it'll get it on the angle, that's all. This one will turn late. It's all about weight from there. Yeah, good try. Two. Of course, both Ben Winther and Brett Spur, part of the runner-up side here at the Dubbo International Fours late last year. So quite familiar with these conditions. I stepped in a little while ago, Jason and Andrew was mentioning to me that Ben Winther was putting on a clinic in the first half of this game. And for those with very good memories, it was the same from his partner in this event, Brett Spur, in the semi-final of that event, up against the side led by Gary Kelly. Semi-final of that fours event. Brett Spur was doing the damage on that day and Appears as though Ben got his team off to a great start when they open up this gap early on in the match. Yeah, Benny's been superb and man of the match. Um, definitely set up every single end, basically, for the Mount Lewis team here. Look, Jack hasn't been bad. Ben's just been sensational. <coughs> Two, Engadine really hasn't got the rub of the green so far. True. True. They've just been that little tiny bit off and not quite got the results they'd want. Maybe a bit unlucky to give away shot one end. And perhaps while we're having some delays with those scores coming through in the women's end, you may have just seen a jack coming to the bottom left-hand side of screen there. So they've had um, an end that needs replaying. Jack's gone outside the rink. I wouldn't expect Jack Lewis to be far away. He... Of course, our reigning state singles champion for another 48 hours or so. <laughs> and put in a, a really good performance over at Perth in the Nationals too. And absolutely will not go back to back. Didn't get through to defend his title. Uh, very hard. So took his opportunity, winning the zone title last year, going through to win a state. Sure, many of the bowlers know around your respective areas just how hard it is to win those zone titles. You're not guaranteed to line up and do it again next year. So you have to be a superstar to win back-to-back -back zone singles, don't you, Lee? 
an absolute genius? Well, no, no comment. Oh, yeah. It's the first time I think you've given me praise without <laughs> saying mentioning, <laughs> mentioning a host of runner-up finishes. But I've yeah. uh, probably done that yeah, two or three times. Different uh, singles events, Open and Champion of Champions. There's a toucher there yeah. from Callum. Kicked it across for shot. Dominant result looking across the rinks at the moment in our reserve pairs competition. Cabramatta 18 leading Bar Beach 3. Eight of 18 ends completed. Yep, slightly reduced durations for the reserve pairs they play 18 ends and the women's senior pairs they play 21 ends but three ball pairs so the feedback was that the reserve pairs tend to take a little longer to get through their games so 18 ends for them and the women's senior an absolutely overwhelming feedback was that they didn't want to walk up and down the green so many times and preferred the shorter length games that uh, that was the best for their participation so that's the format's been adopted. The senior men, though, they want to keep going with 21 of Aussie walking pairs as it's known around the world. And to jump ahead of a host of comments that may be coming in on our YouTube or Facebook channels, we have been taking note of finishing times of all events out here at Dubbo. Conditions of play currently under review, so we'll... Look at that data, a few more days to go out here and see if there are any changes. Possibly it may be correct as is, or whether we need to change anything based on the games that have occurred out here at state finals. Yeah, there's always a few outliers, but we look at the general data. Right. So look at the shots available here for the Mount Lewis guys. They own, and the bowl's coming in either hand there, Jason. What are you thinking? They do. Um, it looks like he's lining up with weight, but maybe that's his, just just his delivery. He is. He's playing aggressive here. Is he looking for the green where he's just pulled it under? If that sort of weight, I reckon he's looking under all that, looking more for the green bowls. Um, yeah, agreed. And Jack he gets the first weight. green bowl, he can get the second. He's probably sitting there for two, maybe three then. Jack was spot on with his weight with his last. This is definitely underneath the line. I wonder if he's under weight as well. Well, good pain, Bowl. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't stop that forehand shot, but it'll definitely get Mount Lewis thinking. Yeah, I think he's yeah, playing harder. the same side of the green. Left hand to his yeah. backhand, of course. Trying to come near to that zebra bowl near centre line. He'll be playing just over draw, somewhere between 30 centimetres and 2 metres over. Whatever he's more confident with. Lift that short bowl a few rolls, or just underneath the shot bowl. Just past the tee weight. You can sit that shot bowl, and if you happen to just drag that jack back to the tee line, you've got a chance. So he's on a good line here. It's just on his weight now. It's up and over that one. Has he got the weight to get it up and over? Well... Oh, he didn't drew want under it. Touch. If he doesn't touch that, he's he, close to draw it under. Looks like Angadine, yeah. Two, two shots. Two. They're still trying to get pretty well jack high centre line to get another counter. Yeah, and hard also for Mount Lewis to run, obviously, two down at the back as well. So, But it could be an option if they're three down here. Quite going to make it with this one. No, that's Erring right. on the cautious side. And stop. I think Brett Spur just needs to guarantee his speed here. You see the indication there from Ben. Just guarantee your pace. Chances will happen here. As we said, even up to two metres over, you're going to be have the opportunity. Turn your own bowl. Working off the wing one at Jack High. Extra weights just held him out a little bit. He stayed on the same line as he first. 
Not an easy one here for Callum. One obviously they'd really like to get. However, it's fraught with danger. That's underneath the ideal line. There is a small port there to be able to come into to count. Wow. Yeah, I think that's going to be enough. So he tipped one of his out. However, he also turned down the closest Mount Lewis bowl. So two already removed. We'll wait for our scoreboard attendant, Max Lowe, to turn that over for us on the board. It may have been three. Twenty-one ten on thirteen ends. Uh, three shots to <laughs> Angadine. Guys had a quick chat there. Trying to find a Matt and Jack position that may be able to get them an advantage. Eight ends to go. Eleven shots behind. Probably unrealistic to think you're going to win every end coming in. So I think they've got to be looking at it, keeping their opposition to 23 as a maximum and try and almost work your way into getting up to about 25 from here. Keep chipping away. Obviously, if you do win every end, that's great. I think they need to look for any opportunity that develops in the second half of an end to get a, a big score. Whether it's grouping bowls together or yeah. moving their oppositions out. If they don't hold them, well, that's just the way the game goes and your opposition's played too well. But try and give yourself that chance. <laughs> Benny Winther. Yeah, Hard to get multiples side. when he's putting those bombs down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, Jack doesn't get shot here. He's going to find a better position anyway. Yep. You saw after his first, he was a bit disappointed. Finishing just in front. Hope you're all enjoying the coverage. If you're just joining us on a Friday afternoon, we're at Club Dubbo, the Bowls New South Wales State Championships. This is the men's pairs final. Jack Lewis and Callum Murray from Engadine playing Ben Winthup and Brett Spur from Mount Lewis. Two of our Sydney based clubs. And two clubs also that will be featuring in the Platinum Pennant season, which is a fortnight away today from getting underway. I have one match live streamed every round. We're really looking forward to bringing those games to you. And we open up at Engadine Friday night, two weeks from now, with the local derby, Engadine versus Tarrant Point. Well, Good effort. Just rolled his opponent up to the jack, though. That's a perfect shot. He'd be, he'd be very pleased with that. You see, not holding currently, but the opportunity is now there to start thinking about that multiple and setting it up. There's a chance to sit the bowl for two, trail the jack for two, work your own short one up a bit closer just generally try and put him into the area to give yourself a chance looks to be not a mile away here, centre of the bowl is really close and he has and falls in front oh, even very very shot. good bowling giving his team a chance they are two perfect bowls. Not sure he could have done any better with those. Brett Spur, same side of the rink, similar shot attempted. You can see already he was just a couple of bowls wider than where Callum's was. And even a little bit quicker. So, covers the back of the rink. First bowl here for Jack Lewis on the crossover. Crucial. If he can get just underneath his own... 15 to 30 centimetres short, just around that zebra bowl, right on centre line. They'll hold a three with no target, and angles at the front not in favour of, of the connection. So, big chance here. You are using the zebra as a segue for us to talk about the zoo here in Dobbo, the world-class attraction. 
exactly what I was thinking of, Andrew, yes. Okay, so they opted to leave it open and cover the back. Ben Winther, does he make it first bowl? He's really close to that line Callum was on. He is. Great Got answer. The edge of the bowl. Wanted it a bit fatter and stay, but... He's got second and third, though, for Mount Lewis. Really need it. I think Jack was visually shaping up, looking at his forehand. Callum saying, you've played this other side pretty well. Try and just avoid the front bowl with good weight. That'll help me later on. Well, that's good a home. Not quite counting, but there's a little pocket of bowls there together for Angadine. There is a little pocket developing there, so Mount Lewis will be wary of that. As you can see, Benny Winther swapping over. Is he trying to get one he in can, amongst that pocket? Oh, he can play the same weight as he did on the other yeah, hand, turn his actually... own. Doesn't want to turn that one in. I think that might have been just a miscue, but looking at the weight, he was pushing into that head, wasn't he? Yeah, that was the weight he wanted. Work his own bowls at the front, turn the shot bowl either past the jack or onto the jack. Well, the Dubbo region is full of experiences for everyone to enjoy. Safari your way around the world at Taronga Western Plains Zoo or get hands-on with an Aussie icon at the Royal Flying Doctor Visitor Experience. Go behind bars of old Dubbo Jail and experience 19th century life in prison or head underground at the Wellington Caves. There's so much more to explore, from an observatory to an arboretum, an historic homestead, an intriguing art gallery, delight in authentic Japanese gardens, or stand in awe of an enormous inland lake. The excitement doesn't stop there. Check out duboregion.com.au to discover more. Oh, Callum Fairway under here. So I think it's second and third to the Mount Lewis combination. So you'll see Brett on his forehand. Definitely reaching. Trying to push that shot bowl, as we said, either past or even onto the jack can work for him. It's very close here, isn't he? Just catching his, his own, own on the front. Depends how he gets it. He di yeah, It's unlucky. It is unlucky. Two there at the moment for Angadine. As we said before, not a huge target. Quite sure that the back one comes into consideration at the moment. So we call him his backhand, trying to beat that bowl of his own. Be a metre and a half past the white bowl you can see right hand side of the screen. And then it will be Brett Spur with his last down a multiple. He's had to pull back a long way. Yeah, just a little quick. Yeah, it is. Pretty good line. Yeah, his line was good. Right. He's working out how many here. Yeah, do a bowl at the back of the ring. Two. Then saying two. Does he risk going bowl to bowl? Or does he just try and draw around the front? If he gets his own, there could be some trouble there. Yeah, they're two bowls together. His worry would be the bowl... Bowl on Short the bowl. of the jack, yeah, catching that one across to his own pair of bowls. At this stage of the game, with the lead they have, I assume he's drawing around the front. Yeah, you don't want to be giving extra shots here, do you? Tell you what, he's on an all right track. Just here. needs to hold past the front. I think he's going to catch. Yeah, he is. Wow, look at that go. I think his weight would have been all right, actually. He finished short, but he did make contact on that real short one, so... Back-to-back -back multiples. 21 plays 12. Just giving themselves a chance. Things moving along. You see some of the scores updating down the bottom. Coromel Cabramatta, that is up to date, as I see it on the scoreboard out our window here. As is that match now between South Tamworth and Foster. South Tamworth, one in front. Cabramatta, 22-3 to over Bar Beach. Two-thirds of the way through that game, and we may even see an early conclusion. 
our ladies game. We see the skips just in front of the scoreboard at the moment on rink. A nine all and eleven ends showing on screen. It's nine on one side and eleven on the other. Kay's just standing in front of the other number, so it might be eleven ends, nine all. So I think that's what we have. Nice and close. Yep, nine nine eleven. Over the weekend, singles action underway once again. Five disciplines. We'll be covering matches from the state men's and state women's singles, starting off tomorrow morning, approximately 8:30 a.m. with Jack McShane and Jay Bruce. We do have a slightly different program here at Club Dubbo West Dubbo than the other two venues. Because the men's and women's singles here at Club Dubbo will play three rounds tomorrow. All of the other disciplines will play only two. Start a little bit later. We'll get through all three rounds. And then on Sunday, what a cracking day for those who want to watch some great singles action. Starting again around about that 8.30 mark. Hopefully, we well, might even be a tad earlier, depending on how the players go. With the women's semi-final. As soon as that's finished, we'll throw the men onto the green. Not literally. And they'll start their semi-final. Then straight after that, we have the women's final. And then, can you guess what we finish with? The men's final? Jason was just scratching his head a bit too hard there. <laughs> uh, Engadine, back in live action here. Yeah, brilliant. Good start there from start. the young guys. Oh, there's been a bit of a momentum shift, hasn't there? Is it a case of they've got enough momentum to get over the top and get the score required, though? Oh, Spurry out well here. Just wants to pull up. Finishes in a very good home, though. Once again, the head just shaping cool. up, depending how... The Engadine guys go. No real obvious target there at the moment that the Mount Lewis guys are going to play to. If it stays as is, they will be just looking at those draw shots. Pritzper just under a metre pass with his last. Locks a few bowls wider in running. And he's just trying to get back to the Engadine bowl there, but trying not to cross the line, obviously. Well, I think Mount Lewis, they're, they're not playing quite as well as they were in the first well, seven or eight ends to start anyway. Well, I'm just looking out the window too, guys. The flags are a slightly different direction to what they yeah. were. They've just turned about 90 degrees around. So players bowling into a bit of a breeze here at the moment. Not strong, probably only 10 or 12 kilometres an hour at the most. It's that to pull home, and yeah, it has. Well, as we say, they can go to the flags, they die down a little. <laughs> it is in a slightly different direction, what breeze there is to the start of the game. Benny, can he get any movement on that? Well, it won't be enough, so... Engadine guys holding probably four here at the moment. Will there be any temptation for the Mount Lewis guys to play a firm runner? Might depend all where Jack Lewis's bowl finishes here. It's the same wow. target as what it was. So they're going to back themselves to make contact through these bowls. Just over draw weight. Trial the jack, sit any bowl. Anything but the hole is good. Well, anything but short, really. Yep. He'd be very disappointed with that. He will May be. have tipped a bowl in. That well, has cut a couple out. Maybe back to three now, but... He may have also made it a little bit better for himself, too, because if he's narrow now and onto that bowl, it can roll straight towards the jack. And even if you thump it on the side... It will come off the green bowls and head towards the jack. 
So. I'll be tempted to go just a bit f more firm. Look for Jack, two bowls or a whack on his own. Once again, might just depend on where Callum's first one finishes here as to what weight that Brett will want to play with his first. If he's the right weight, he can bend in here. Just carried a fraction over. Well, that's just going to, I think, force Brett into arriving with a few yards. You can sort of see the signal there. A metre or two over. Plenty of bowls to work up. You play it perfect. You trail the jack for two. Yeah, he's gone really tight, hasn't he? So where is he going to push this oh. bowl? Not pretty for him. A lot of thought going in here. What do we do? What do we do? Little ring on the inside, close both eyes, throw it down there. Well, oh, look, I think forehand draw is probably the only option. You know, if they can tuck it on a knot, if they can tuck it sideways, it'd be great. Risk is, tuck, is trailing it straight down the line. But while they might be holding four here, maybe five, they'd rather a solid two. It's a bit vulnerable as it is. Yep. I mean, the Mount Lewis have got to play the bowl, but it's certainly there to be played. The Might even decide that the best back is the best option. Looks like a uh, option there. But that won't stop the Mount Lewis aggression, though, because if they're four down now, they're only one down at the back. Yeah, they wouldn't be too worried about giving that a whack. So Brett having a good look at this. He's stopped about three or four times on the way back to the mat there, so. I think we're gonna see aggression. What's gonna nice. happen? Come through there. Jack onto the oh, it's bounced forward. Oh, oh, oh. First He's glance, I'm going to say the green near centre line is shot. Without a lot of confidence, but I think it's one Engadine. Oh no, that one counts. Well, I thought it was the closest one to centre, so it is two. So he saved a few because I think he was probably four. Three consecutive multiples now. Still a bit of a gap. Over it is narrowing. The semi final this morning. The opposite for the Mount Lewis guys towards the end of the game. They trailed 15 shots to 10 and won the last five ends to go in front 17-15. Some updates around the green. South Tamworth, 17-13 in front of Foster. Three ends to play. That's the senior women's pair. Senior men's. We have Coromel 14, Cabramatta 9. Nine ends to play there. Plenty to evolve in that game. Cabramatta also in action on that green in the open reserve pairs. The board not far away from being updated. That's 22-3 currently. They're playing back in the direction of their equipment, so Skips will alter that at the conclusion of this end. As Andrew steps out of the commentary box, he's left Jason on in charge of cameras. Oh, so look out. Who knows what might happen for the next next few moments. Uh, we could have some fun with Andrew, couldn't we? <laughs> So, unfortunately, mate, you or I are not confident in... Uh, no. There's a lot of buttons here for you and I, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, that's one, one part of it I haven't touched. Just happy to have the headset on and, and assist that way. 
can do the technical bit of. I can do the technicalities of unplugging a, <laughs> a cord and putting it back in, but. <laughs> I said earlier while you were out doing that, I was uh, given that high priority task this morning. They only oh, get the yeah. most important people out to do that, Jason, don't they? Yeah, that's right, mate. Um, equipment can be touchy, so you do need a, uh, a fine, uh, fine touch on that. No update on the rink scoreboard for the state women's pairs. That is still showing nine apiece after 11 ends. It's again, the skip's crossing over there now. Playing back towards the club, so hopefully after this end, our skips will update that for us. There's a lot of chat out there between on crossovers too, Lee. So obviously in those tight games, teams are getting together, trying to put confidence into each other, discussing ca tactics as much as possible, options. So building up here at the moment, three for the three deepest bowls. Mount Lewis, the three shorter ones, Engadine. And Callum wanting this one to count or finish pass, and he has got the deepest bowl now himself. So. Brett with the option here. Same weight or same line. Let's apply the same weight. Same weight needs to narrow the line. Apply the same weight and reduce same line and reduce the weight. Ben's interested here, he's down on his haunt, he's just slid past, so. Talked about the setup for the Engadine guys, trying to get a multiple. It's Mount Lewis that it's favouring at the oh. moment for a, for a bigger score. If they do happen to get the jack movement back to that pack of four bowls and hold on to it, it's going to be huge. a yeah, huge blow. Possibly a match-winning end here in the offering for Mount Lewis. And that won't stop that uh, shot from playing. This isn't no helping Engadine, so... Yeah, a couple of shots in there, so could go either way. Mount Lewis could attempt this shot and not quite get it. And Engadine can score, so... Confident draw here from Ben. Onto the jack or underneath the shot bowls. He's looking at just it. Just outside, Very I intently, think. he's just got to pull back, he's... Oh, but another one in the catch and pen, as I say. <laughs> one. Obviously, if you're Angadine, you want to get to those bowls. Need you just to. You can't afford to be tight yourself and move the jack. So just play the perfect one, one bowl outside the jack to get to Ben's last one. It's a very hard spot to get to on that side. So. I thought they may have looked to go to the left-hand side of screen to get there. Ben, same weight. Narrow the line. You can get a result if you're underneath the jack. Outside the jack, there's nothing for you. He is slightly narrow, but is it too narrow? Well, it's weight, I think. Weight, you're yeah. right. Yeah, he's disappointed the, too. The line was nearly perfect. So, you see the Engadine guys talking. They want to get one behind. It wouldn't surprise me if they're moving across. This one was so close it deserved another look. Just missed. Perfect weight. So, we'll see where Callum wants to go with this ball at his forehand grip. Yeah. Can still count and get to those balls, and it must look a lot easier from the mat to get to that spot, or less danger to get to that spot on this forehand. That is under. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to provide another shelf down here. Catches the front. Wow. Uh, I think that's going to force the hand of Brett Spur. This might be firm. Can he, target the jack. He can blow out the that ball. If he feathers that ball, he can get across to the other two. I want to play with the weight that brings that one, that one in without disturbing anything else. Have a chance to push right through these. Uh, this is really close with these wider bending bowls. Underneath, off that. Oh, off jack. what a great bowl, Brett Spur. There's a chance now. Callum, in return, gets this bowl right. He can get it without the jack for shot. 
the chance of removing a few of the other Mount Lewis bowls behind. And what angle he gets could also kill the end. Just needs to miss the zebra. Uh, caught it at the front. So wow. big opportunity here. Well. I think this is yeah. a match winning chance. If he turns the jack off the centre line to the left, it will be enough to extend the lead and probably flatten the batteries of the Engadine guys. So draw a shot to count with the ultimate prize being turn the jack half a metre to the left and it'll be fingers and toes required. You see from the players they're interested just hoping it to turn back Oh, look at the weight. Oh, it turned back. Look at that weight. Has he drawn a second? Uh, may have gone too far. Well, I'm looking. Uh, I'm going to assume by Jack's body language that it's only one. And it is. It is the one, but. So good shots, though, from Brent Spur. Perfect Just... weight on both bowls. Made the connection. And stops that little run of Anchor Dean, too. So. Well, they'd won three ends in a row to score 7 0. And go from 21-7 to 21-14. So, huge interruption to their momentum. And scored another couple there. They really have a run at them. You did see Jack's disappointment at the result that Callum got. Would indicate that they're realising they're in a bit of trouble here. Our women's pairs final. That scoreboard has been updated. 13 ends now played. We have Fig Tree on 10 and St John's Park on 10. Wow. We've seen an 8 all, actually a 4 all. Go back again. There's been a 3 all and a 4 all. And a nil all, obviously, at the start. <laughs> Tight game, so great to see. Matt Lewis guys stretching things out. Matt just one and a half metres from maximum at the clubhouse end. And the Jack all the way to the maximum spot well, at the far end. Jason observed earlier they've rolled a lot of Jacks right near that tee. The mat may have varied a little bit, but a lot of the times that Jack's been right near the tee. For Matt Lewis, yeah. Benny Winner's really taken a liking to that that position for the Jack. If you are in the area and arriving for singles competition and watching us on our social media, we have one of the greens here available currently at Club Dubbo for practices this afternoon. There may be a short window at the conclusion of these games to get onto the green later on this afternoon also, depending on the finishing time of the matches that we currently have. Leeds crossing over. One shot to Mount Lewis. Bar Beach have doubled their score since we last gave you that update. That's now 22-6 to Cabramatta. Two thirds of the way through there. 12 ends out of 18 played. Heaps there. Not happy with himself with that one. That's a really nice line there that Callum's taken. Once again, though, going to be a little bit underweight. Greens this week, Jason, they've held up pretty well. We've had, as we said earlier, about 80 mil of rain over in the last four days. It was an almighty storm here on Sunday night which had the greens flooded for hours. Plenty yeah. more rain on Wednesday morning. And we're here for the triples finals. Darren and the staff have done an amazing job getting them up to speed. Oh, fantastic. Um, 
if you go out and, and you don't understand, you get out on the green and the managing the wear and tear on the greens really well. Changing directions of play, slow, moving rinks across um, the green. You actually can't see hardly any wear and tear out there. And we're, what, 11 or 12 days in? Yeah, that's right. And as you, you'll see Amazing. on screen, if you're looking at, at home or at your club, the coverage of grass on these greens, fantastic. They've known for a few months now that the event's going to be out here, so they're going through renovation season the back end of last year. And a lot of work to get them up, and that's allowing bowls like this one to turn right back. Benny Winther. He's sitting jack high, so it is a... Well, I thought it would be the way that uh, Angadine may come, you know, sit on that bowl inside of it, but favouring this forehand, and what do I know? Look at that. <laughs> Close. That's going to be second shot. Very much the same here from Ben. Does that touch the jack, that will be okay. And if he does touch it for one down, get a really good close bowling there. Block off any opportunity that Engadine may have. Wanting it to pull right back in now. That's a very good position too. Is that shot you called the first time around now? Well, he now has that bowl for the jack to go to. He'll sit that one through, stay for two. He's not no, he's far put it in the away. area. Just needs the right part of the jack. He did. Oh, I thought he had it. <laughs> he had it all the way until he didn't. <laughs> oh, Corey Daly will be watching and saying, that's, that's not bad luck. <laughs> uh, if you look back... After this game, through our socials, you'll see what we mean. Quite a few people enjoyed that little clip put together. Thanks to Corey for being a good sport too. And yeah, most definitely. Taking in the fun that was intended. <laughs> our media team done a fantastic job here over the course of the event. Ben wanting this to slow down. Right across, edge off that. Yep, good position. We know what to expect here from Callum. Be a similar shot to Jack Lewis's fourth bowl. Right up to this Jack Eye shot bowl. Just wide for that weight. As we said, our media team, Jason, done a fantastic job over the first week and a half. Kira O'Shea oh. has set the benchmark for all our future events very, very high for the team. This is Kira's last day at this event with us. And Trisha is coming up to complete duties for the remainder of the event. So we wish Kira safe travels home in the morning. Brett Spur just wants this to get up a little bit more onto that bowl. Great That'll shot. Do. Same intended shot here from Callum. He needs this. Similar to earlier. He can decide to keep the weight or keep the line. He needs to adjust only one of those. It's definitely just inside his last. And here well, it comes. Come back. It's, he's in Center a... of bowl, flop down. Oh, well, it didn't just fall. going to get on its running edge. So one shot to Mount Lewis. 23-14. Four ends to go. Cut we said out. earlier they could probably afford to get them up to 23 and no higher. They've hit that mark now. Yeah. We're at the stage now where Engadine need to win Every end. each of the last four. Yeah. Update around the greens. 20 of 21 ends played in the senior women's pairs. South Tamworth, 19. Lead Foster, 16. Carol White, Chrissy Myers. And Carol White has just drawn a toucher. 
at the first bowl. <laughs> okay, so it looks like South Tamworth with the advantage. Three in front, last bowl and holding shot. Uh, we'll try and keep you updated in a few minutes. So where that one's situated. 14 ends played in the senior men's. Coromel now 17-11 in front of Cabramatta. Leading there at the moment, that's John Green and Eric Johannes. No update to our other two matches at this point in time. It's still Cabramatta 22-6 over Bar Beach. And 10 all in the ladies final, Fig Tree Sports and St John's Park. Same two clubs that played in our women's triples final just 48 hours ago, Jason. Yep, so Kay Moran would obviously looking for a little bit of revenge. And I'll tell you what, she's doing really well. She's in the game. Dawny Heyman has just drawn a touch as I look down. So it's some kind of but event, Dawn. She has, has, and she's really taken the opposition teams out early. And then just game managed from there. Like we looked this morning, Natasha Russell was brilliant um, in that game that we <coughs> streamed in the yeah. semi-final. Both prepared to play an attacking style again. Natasha has a really good weighted shot on her, as does Dawn. So if they are getting in trouble, Jason, they're probably working their way out of it with that. Most definitely. And then outdrawing their opponents on plenty of other ends. Yeah. Good start of there. From Brett Spur. It is still Engadine holding one. Pretty sure for Dawn, this is match number 16 of the event, and she is yet to have a loss. So she has been. Oh, that's a little bit unlucky there. So that's 16 matches is back to back to back to back. Not a break at all. Um. And no rest for her tomorrow either. She's back here yeah. at Club Dubbo, round one, 8.30 a.m. Women's singles action. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing if you're coming up against it, Andrew, tomorrow. We've, we've, we've scheduled in a couple of little breaks for her. She, get, she gets a match off between a semi-final and a final, okay. provided she makes it. Oh, good effort there. Might just be enough. It's going to look awkward for the guys. It will look awkward there. So a swap of hands, try and beat their back bowl. Flop will count. Will be close to counting. No, he's actually looking. I'm telling you to push up through the middle. So. I'm sure if I'm a singles opponent of Dawn's, whether I'm wanting to play her tomorrow <laughs> because she's played a lot of games or not wanting her to play her because right. of the form that she's in. She's nearly going out there on autopilot now, isn't she? She's got a real good feel for our green, for the greens here at West Dubbo now. Um. Plenty of major events now for Dawn. Has had successful Australian Open campaigns over the last few years. That's a lot of matches over a two-week period. World Championships, Asia Pacifics, multi nations, and things like that that are heavy in the amount of games that are played day after day. So I'm just trying to keep an eye on that last end of Foster and South Tamworth. And South Tamworth, uh, Skips have just put down, they both put down their second bowl each, so South Tamworth still holding one. As we see, Benny Winter with a good shot here on our stream drink. And his second one there. Jack's going to be underneath the line with this one. Right, I think the urgency now with these Angadine guys, I know they have to force the pace, so that. They've obviously got a, a heavy preference at the moment for the right-hand side of screen. As, yeah, as you said, Jason, last few moments of the senior women's triples. Chrissy Myers got Thomas a... from Foster onto the mat. Chrissy Matched Myers down. has a head in her hand. She doesn't want to look. <laughs> and that's a perfect positional bowl there from Ben. It is. At, right to where his skipper wants it. Okay, Joan so, with the last bowl. You keep an eye on that one. She keep is. us updated as... She's Jack playing late on the backhand. No, not much indication out there. She's inside. She's made contact, but not much moved around. Two, Two shots, shots up for South Tamworth. Chrissy Myers will not play a last bowl. 
And I think Chrissy Myers is nearly in tears from here. Yeah, Look at I'm, it. I'm sure of it. <laughs> There's plenty of South Tamworth supporters at the back and the sides of this green here. She knows yeah. what to do. Well, Christine Myers won her section on a count back yesterday by wow. one shot. Yeah. Knew she needed to score a single on the last end of her match to squeak into the semis. Wow, so back in coverage here. Brett Spurs is going to count. Wow, this is a good setup. This is This is match winning right now. Time to shine. Yep. Callum, it's firm weight. Needs the right contact on the front white bowl. Just pulled it tight. Clears two at the back. So no real guessing game here. This is a back of the rink bowl yep, coming most definitely. from Brett Spur. You don't want to fatten anything up the front. You don't want to fatten anything at the side. Got a really good three. Isn't it a really, yeah. Just looking here, I suppose there is a very slim chance at perfect angle with huge weight that you may get the four nearest bowls out for that. <laughs> I wouldn't be going near that head at all. Oh, of course. No, you get into the back of the ring, That's, get to the tee. Yep. Get to the tee, you beat some of the extras. Oh, has he got the run? Well, I'm not sure he meant to draw another shot. Well, it hasn't changed. This is four, and we're approaching must-hit stage of the game. His mate indicated draw a backward. I think he tried to. I think he just uh, dropped it a bit short. This is tough here for Callum. He can get this bowl really good, catch one of the others and only reduce the count and not get what he wants. He's going to get the front one up through the oh, front. Oh, he got his own out, so that's yeah, four. four. And in all honesty, that is game. Not mathematically. Jason's warming up the vocals. He's, he's calling it game, set, bingo. I am. I'm sorry, I am. These two guys have just been too solid. 27-14, they... yeah. What a what a fantastic performance. So, two guys who have come into the state only a couple of seasons ago up from Victoria, made the leap into Mount Lewis. Just see a proud husband walking past there, Jeff Myers, <laughs> Chrissy Myers' husband. He's got a bit of a grin on his face, so be very proud of his wife. Just having some discussions here oh. with Andrew. We are trying to negotiate to bring you some more coverage should this match finish on this end. Well, we've got three left to play, and there's uh, 13 shots of difference. If Engadine score, it's all but impossible. Uh, unless Engadine score, it's all but impossible. But if uh, Mount Lewis manage another three this end, we'd need two maximums to force an extra end. I can promise you if Mount Lewis score three this end, this will be the final end of the match. Our women's pairs game next door is our option to try and get some cameras moved across to have a look at. Well, it's thirteen twelve after fifteen with yeah, plenty of play fig tree in front. Yeah, plenty of play still to go. So get out there quickly, move some cameras, eh? And get and keep the coverage going for our. <laughs> this looks like I'm being sent out. <laughs> He said, get out there quickly, so I just pointed at you. <laughs> they think I'm the quickest, so uh, yeah, we will. We'll get them cameras moved, um, and we will get coverage of the final ends of the state women's final. In all honesty, Jason, if we are talking about quickest, in this commentary box, you are a heavy <laughs> favourite on the 100-yard dash. <laughs> you should be in the middle of this, because the hooker's the smallest fella in the scrum. Uh... And look at that. It's the opening bowls and the zebra's near it again. It's two fair efforts from Jack. Well, uh, yeah, just negotiating in the background here. So, good shot from Brett Spur. We might have a two-man team here. The negotiations are currently underway as to the movement of equipment. Maybe a two-man operation. 
Andrew and Jason with Andrew with an I'll go up the far end. Roll. Andrew goes down this end, eh? <laughs> we'll get him moved as quick as possible. So what I'll do is I'll point the middle camera at the head that's in action. Here we go. Weight coming down. Oh, he's got, got them both, both out. What a great shot. So, this isn't over yet. Oh, actually, I did say it was, but... Well, if... Callum Engadine, Murray's giving his team a chance. If Engadine get back and win this now, you are going to be the most hated man in Mount Lewis. Oh, it looks like out. Yep. So, a couple of shots there yep. for Engadine. Updating our other boards at the moment. Just a reminder, we've had our first winner's crowned senior ladies pairs. Victory to South Tamworth over Foster in the final. Around the greens, the state women's pairs. Fig Tree 13 leading St John's Park 12 after 15 ends. Open reserve. Cabramatta still in front there. It's got a little bit closer. 22 shots to 10 now over Bar Beach. They've played 13 ends. And our senior men, 15 ends played there. Coromel 17 leading Cabramatta 12. We apologise for the delay in getting these boards up on screen. We'll have those back up there for you shortly to have a further update in the reserve pairs. Bar Beach narrowing the gap ever so slightly. It's now 22-11 with four ends to play. Cabra to get up a little bit more. Yeah, maybe. I'd expect Benny Winford to get one inside of that though. It's oh. going to be his next one. Yeah, wow. So that is well under the line. Sure is. So it's got to draw him in and hope for bowls to miss. Holding three currently, Engadine got a chance of six. Two bowls left to go for Mount Lewis. Engadine boys would really want all three of these to count. This needs to run right up past his first. That's going to be enough. That's four. Could nearly be a run shot here, just to cut the count down. I don't know. Depends on how Spurry's feeling. Yeah, if agreed. he's confident with his running runners, there's a bit of a target down there. Just get some green bowls out, but oh, danger agreed. is getting yeah. his own out and adding more in the count. But yeah, you've probably got two, two goes goals. at yeah. the same shot, whatever your preference is. So four down, plenty in front. That looks like the draw. Played this wider side of the green very well. Playing weight to the tee on a wider line. Just needs this one to pull up. It's going to go through, so it is still four. So Callum really wants to count with this one. It's got to keep putting the pressure on and hoping for a miss with Brett's last one. Try and draw two yourself. Yeah, you're going for weight here, Callum. Yeah. Doesn't want too much to move here. No, he doesn't. Gonna flick it's across. Good. Well, that counts. Wow. Well, don't, well, don't worry about the target. Yeah. You've just got to hold him and hope for a lot of misses. Yep, most you're 13 definitely. behind with three to go. If he gets it, he gets he's it. He's lining up here now. And he's got to hope he's not gripped it right. Well, some are moving. Is it just one or is it more? Well, well, it's he's two got two out. out. I think he's only two down. All right, I'm going to go with three. Okay. There, there we go. three it is. All right. Another, well done, Lee. Another lemonade, Jamie. That's why he's the boss. <laughs> uh, just see the call there. Obviously, they don't want to count. There may be the potential with slight jack movement to bring another in. Well, can you stop in time, Callum? Yes, you have. 
feathered the front, but I still think it's enough for four. Four. So the dream stays alive, and our commentators don't have to go and move those cameras just yet. And nine shots, two ends. Never declare a result is the commentary rule. Jason's broken that rule. Ah, that's a game. I'm sorry, but... Uh, what a thrilling finish it would be Most if definitely. Angadine could get another four or five on this end. Well, thrilling, I guess, unless you're a Mount Lewis supporter in this scenario. So, very, very short end here. Big change in tactics. That's What's the reason behind this, Lee? More oh, bowls to count. Well, this has been their go-to, and I think I missed the first few ends of this game, but you both said that they were rolling the jack to the T, the Mount Lewis crew. It's a, it's a hard one. You're probably more likely to get the bigger score on that longer length that you just had. Tougher fit, weighted shot connection. They did just get a, a more four margin, on that previous yeah, a bit more margin for error. More chance to kill if you need to with the jack further away from the ditch. Well, of course, but you're trying to score the shots, not kill the end. You can't. Yeah. You can't win the game if you're killing ends. So you need to score the shots. I understand the theory behind option B being the dead end. However, that's not getting you any shots, unfortunately. So I think you're probably more likely to score on the longer jack. The odd short bowl here and there, potentially blocking any runners That's and some good bowls yourself. Really good setup here by Benny Winther. Two bowls just behind. He's definitely got shot. Well, the truth is we've got two to go. It's nine the difference. Ingerdine... Don't score this end. We're finished. Didn't catch in the ladies' game what the score was, but Fig Tree have won another end. So they'll extend their so lead. He's just bumped into his own. Not sure if it's counted, but I still think the advantage is with Mount Lewis with the better position bowls at the back there. Brett would love to see a little tickle of the jack backwards here. He's on a pretty good track. It just depends if he's got the right weight to come all the oh, way gonna back. He's going to draw the shot. Wow. Brilliant. This is... Outside chance here. Maybe a metre or two on my forehand, left of screen. Sit the shot bowl and stay. Best result's probably just getting about two-thirds of the bowl on the outside and kicking the jack to the right. Try and get it hidden behind some of your own. So he's just with... He's probably played the weight you said. Hasn't made it any better for himself. No. Or more to precisely, hasn't made it any worse for Mount Lewis. Just looking ahead here, how do Angadine get a big score that doesn't become a huge target? So let's see where this one finishes from Spur. Does he fall that down? Oh. And that's going to make it really hard for a big score, no target. I think it's time for the Engadine boys to utilise the dead end option. Very three, much so. Three balls sort of just short of jack eye to the right, one at the back. Nothing's there. Well, You're not going to be able to play weight to keep your bowl on the back of the rink and get a big score down there later on in the end. So I think it's... You go, get two or three bowls here or, or kill it. You go really big and hit that last bowl just on the off the centre line side. You may well clear out three or all four of the Mount Lewis bowls there. Here we go. Not quite that angle that you set, Andrew. So that's the intention shown. Now, if I'm Mount Lewis, I am four metres short centre line here. <laughs> It's the only way you can potentially get beat is for Engadine to score. They're not trying to score. They're trying to score on the next end they are after now. they've killed this one. So I'd, I'd give them that uh, close bowls around. They can have as many close bowls as they want. I'm centre line, yep. locker this. The four metres short bit I can do really easily. The exact centre line, no, that's a little tough. 
Even if Jack's able to remove two, three, or four of these bowls, most they can score here, Angadine oh. is four. He's wide there, so... Well, he's got two of them. Yeah, I'm Still liking your short option. option. I'm liking your short option. Nice. Well, you're just over the draw to the green bowl. If you do chip the jack back a foot, you take away that drive. Oh, you won't take it away. They'll still be playing it. Yeah, they're going for a kill no matter what here. Oh, through the hole. That bowl, only positive with that one is it may collect the jack and keep it in bounds if it's hit. <laughs> may come off that and get somewhere up towards the front of the rink. So, skips. This is drive time. Hope you boys have got your shoes on just in case Callum misses these couple. Just a reminder, if this is the last end, we are going to move camera equipment across to capture the end of the women's pairs final. Callum's in an area. What's going to happen? Well, he's chipped his own out. You're right, Lee. The only option is short on the line. Well, they're calling to the back of the rink. You can't lose yeah. at the back of the rink no. if you're Mount Lewis. Block the jack. Exactly. Make his shot harder. This one is, well, it's probably given Callum a, a sniff there if he pulls it offline that that could even get a result off that last one. So this is it. It's underneath. It's got two bowls, not the jack, and that is game, set, bingo. We have our state men's pairs winners, the Mount Lewis pairing of Ben Winther and Brett Spur. Around our 23-24 champions. A valiant run to the final from the boys from Angadine, Jack Lewis and Callum Murray. As you see, the boys a little bit disappointed with their effort this afternoon. They've worked their way through an incredibly tough area in Zone 13 to qualify for the finals. All the way through sectional play, and into the final, but it just wasn't to be today. So attention turns now to our women's pairs final. We'll have some better camera shots for you in just a moment. Try and call it from outside the studio we're in at the moment through the club. And it is Fig Tree holding shot, Julie Cotton. Terrific last bowl. You may have just saw that bowl come into view. So one shot currently to Fig Tree. Try and call this the best we can until the cameras are set up for you. Just a reminder, there's a few other finals taking place around the greens here at Club Dubbo. We've seen our senior women's Pairs final completed. Carol White and Christine Myers from South Tamworth. 21-16 winners over the Foster pairing. Open reserve. Cabramatta 22. Bar Beach 11. 14 ends played. Our senior men. It's Coromel from Zone 16. There's 17 shots at 13. Leaders over Cabramatta from zone 12. Coromel 17-13. Five ends to go there. And the game you're catching there at the moment as Dawn's Bowl sails through a gap is Fig Tree. There's another score to go on. As it sits at the scoreboard at the moment, it's 15 ends played. Fig Tree leading St. John's Park, 13 shots to 12. It was Fig Tree first to play in this end back towards the club, so there is at least one additional shot to go on their score, and they are holding here. Cameron just released her fourth and final bowl of this 17th end. Playing on her forehand back towards the clubhouse. The bowl about to come into view. There it is, and it's just run past. So that's about 
One metre past the jack. Jack just behind the wall of bowls there. Team just currently moving those cameras at the moment. It is Fig Tree holding shot. Dawn has just released the final bowl of the 17th end. Just playing with weight up through the front, but catches a short bowl. So one to the ladies from Fig Tree. See the scoreboard updated in just a moment for you. As that's been done, I can let you know that one of our other finals has now concluded. It's Cabramatta in the open reserve pairs with a strong and dominant victory over the side from Bar Beach. It's in our match that we're covering. We'll have full view of the jack and the usual angles that you're all accustomed to in just a few moments. 17 ends played in this women's pairs fixture. It's Julie Cotton and Kay Moran from Fig Tree Sports 15. Currently leading Natasha Russell and Dawn Heyman from St John's Park on 12. So you can see the map position at the moment at the clubhouse end with Natasha about to deliver her first bowl. The mat just over a metre from maximum length and the jack all the way at the other end right up on the tee. Right. Just a metre or so short of maximum distance and Natasha's first one has gone through to the ditch. The earlier bowl of Julie just... Just over half a metre short. As there you go. I knew it was just one click of a button. I might have been able to bring you that earlier as Andrew and Jason rejoined me. In commentary, as we see Julie's second. Well, that's a very similar bowl to the one Natasha just played. Uh, thanks for staying with us. We hope you're enjoying a bit of bonus coverage. You see at the top of the screen that game that's just completed. Our scheduled fixture. Van Winther and Brett Spur from Mount Lewis. Our state men's pairs champions. Coming away with victory over Jack Lewis and Callum Murray from Engadine. We've moved cameras around to capture the last four ends of our women's pairs final. The score is currently Fig Tree 15, St John's Park 12. Local time here in Dubbo, just after 4.15 p.m. Most ideal conditions out there at the moment. The breeze has almost gone completely temperature about 25 degrees no wind mid pace grass greens the players can't ask for much more at the moment there's dawn's first so working its way right back in look at this perfect weight that dawn's played a feature of her game Throughout the time out here at Dubbo. Okay, just looking for a meter on the last. Oh, this one's definitely a little quicker. It's going to carry a little too much speed to draw shot. down on her backhand again just underneath her first line as she kept the speed up just going to die off a little will it be enough to beat the front and it is uh, two fantastic draw shots from Dawn Heyman as players cross over to play their third and fourth bowls 
So again, a big thank you to our three host venues for this year's state championships here at Club Dubbo, where our finals are currently being held, as well as the Macquarie Club and North Dubbo RSL Sporties. Those three clubs, in collaboration with Dubbo Regional Council, bringing the event west of the Blue Mountains for the first time in our state championship history. Staff, committee and volunteers out here at those venues in Dubbo have done an amazing job in preparation and delivering this event. And we really hope you're enjoying the coverage. He said, if you're just joining us on a Friday afternoon, this is bonus coverage. Our featured match in the men's pairs has come to a conclusion. So four ends to go on the ladies' pairs. There's Natasha. Just trying to come in underneath that wing bowl. Now, perfect speed. Just missing the line ever so slightly. It's Fig Tree. Three in front. Four ends to play. At St John's Park holding two on end number 18. There's two matches left in action. There's Julie. Trying to get all the way past the front bowls. Catches the bowl of Dawns and drops out. So it is still two to the Saints. The other match still ongoing is our senior men's pairs. John Green and Eric Johannes from Coromel on 17. Leading Gary Cor Corey and Arthur Priestley from Cabramatta on 14. It's four ends to play as a big high five there from the St. John's ladies as Natasha draws another shot. So holding three here. The red team. And what better way to lead into a Friday night here at the club and a bit of bonus coverage on our screens. The crowd's building up inside the venue. No doubt all excited to see the NRL Premiers in action at 6pm this evening. <laughs> Great food and beverage options here at the club while that game's going on. I've got no words to say to that. <laughs> Lee Stinson back in his Raiders in. <laughs> so K. Moran onto the mat. Shaping up. Try and push through some of these bowls at the front. There she goes, her forehand. She made contact with any of these shot bowls. Well, anything but the gap for Kay now. Oh, oh, we've, uh, oh. We've called it early. Wow. So three to St John's. As it stands, match level if they hold on to these. Dawn, two perfect draw shots earlier and chasing after this one. Can she count and make K shot more difficult? Well, that's going to sit that bowl up. Dawn's been really good at those shots uh, this whole week. When there's been a chance to add, she she's really capitalised and I don't think I've seen her miss one. Yeah, well, if I'm a selector, I'm putting her straight into the Australian <laughs> side. <laughs> uh, most definitely. Yeah, good plan here from Kay. Those angles have changed a little bit since she left the head to play her third bowl. Bouncing up the green despite that knee guard on her left knee. So she's got to, got to pick a hand here. There's no real worse result. She's trying to work her own bowls. She's going to change sides of the rink. Going to predict Jason a very similar weighted bowl to her last. She finds the gap between her own. Shot bowl onto the jack. They do have a bowl at the back of the rink there where the lady's shadows are at the back. We can work any of those others up and reduce the count potentially. Exactly right. Yep. She's going to make contact with her own. It's probably just best served to be the wider bowls. I think there's probably more chance of one of those staying in the head and reducing the count. With the front one of those two that are sitting together. We'll see if it's the same weight. Last bowl was probably about three to four metres over jack high. 
Oh, maybe even firmer here. Once again, just not the gap for Kay. Any other results she are positive? That front. She's very. Oh, wow, she was close. <laughs> As we said, probably just best served getting the wider one rather than the inside one. Big chance for five here for Dawn. <clears throat> like having new leaders. Just a reminder, if you're just joining us, this is the Bowles New South Wales State Women's Pairs Final. Bonus coverage. Our men's game has come to a conclusion. Fig Tree Sports 15 lead St. John's Park 12. 17 ends played. This is the final bowl on end number 18. And as Jason predicted earlier, Dawn's not missing these opportunities. So that is a handful. It will be one, two, three, four, and five shots. Brilliant end by St. John's Park. So new leaders, 17-15. Yep, and just a quick conversation between the two St. John's Park ladies. I'm Dawn, I'm going to Natasha and say, could you just roll that length that they just did? Because I drew four <laughs> bowls within half a metre. I'd be happy with that again, please. Let's see what they go to. Yeah, there it is. Matt towards the back. Well, that is a Nelly replica of where it was at this other end from when Julie rolled it last time. Great work, Andrew Lynn, getting the, live, getting the scoreboard up there on the screen. Jack a few metres shorter, so it's about three metres from the end of the line. You'll see that in just a moment as that camera operator down there, Joe, is just about to turn that one around. There he is. Look at that, Joe, the cameraman, <laughs> at his best. Can hear you. <laughs> and Natasha Russell opening up. Very good opener. Maybe that's what Dawn needed. She just needed the cameras on. <laughs> Trailing during the game, we put the cameras on the rink where she's been Bang. featuring in just about all of our finals played to date. And scores are five, and Natasha's backed her up well here. So This is pretty well down, yeah. too. Is it going to reach? It's a great shot yeah. from Julie, and a touch-up. Great oh, shot. Look at the encouragement there from Kay. One of those players, K. Moran, who's nice and loud and positive out on the rink, providing great encouragement there to her lead. See, not the result they wanted last end, but to bounce back. Tasha just needs to push up a little bit more here. Yeah. Oh, and look at that. On cue. Thanks, Dawn. The one hand clap from your skip. It's the one we don't want to get as players, the single hand clap. <clears throat> Never a good sign. And Julie, just outside the line of a first. She'll be hoping to run on a long way now. Cover towards the back, and it yeah, has. Yeah, good bowl. Let's see the players change over. We'll give you an update now in the senior men's pairs. 18 ends played. And we have Coromel, 19, Cabramatta, 14, 18 ends played. So three to go. Dawny's coming down with a positive weight here, I reckon. Trying to get to that shot bowl. Just wants to turn a little more. She's done it. She'd be a little disappointed about one, Dawn. I think she's only made three. Probably disappointed she wanted to get it <laughs> neat and fat, not just not the edge. <laughs> she only brought every single bowl that her team's played into the count. Yeah. So, 10K, draw a shot. Her backhand, very deliberate style, nice and low. Arm extension, very smooth release. Just looking for just a real dead draw here. Good weight can count here. Miss the front. I'm just going to catch and drop down. At least two to St. John's. So a few metres less now from Dawn. Holding shot. Can back off the speed. Let's draw. 
between the two bowls of her teammate at the front. Dawn Heyman, if she runs a little further, she has. And she counts. Well, I can see the team here at Club Dubbo in the background. They've got the contract book out there. They're going to offer Dawn a spot in their pennant team, I think. <laughs> CEO uh, Tim Farrell, yeah. Chairman Tony Spears... Do what you they can are. to get this lady Actually, out here to Dubbo for penance. Chairman's out there sitting on the sidelines. He is talking a lot, so that could be some conversation happening. Oh, Miss the front, Kane. You're close. Kane Moran just gets a little oh, straightener. Going to drop back. I tell you what, very close for shot. Much the same here for Natasha. Yeah. Dawn played with her first. We don't quite know who shot. Someone's going to have a look and then keep it secret. She won't be telling anyone what's happening here. Well, we're using the uh, rings device there, sharing it round. The bullseye. Bullseye. So Natasha will be playing that. Yeah, we can see. Looking for that metre through at least. One of those ones. You can afford to overplay this. Underplay it. You're not going to get a result. Overplay it. You can move that ball right She's through the gap. A good and, line. Well, needs to run out. I think this is going to short mm. to the front pack. And you can see the frustration there from Dawn. Yeah. And that's going to provide a visual block to that bowl as well. There's still angles with the wing bowls to use. No doubt she's a little disappointed with that one. That's a nice smooth release there as well. Julie. Okay, urging it to sit down a little. Might be more like a second one. Dawn is getting her to swap hands here. Interesting. I'm going to take a guess with that call from Dawn. Obviously, you can see the build-up of fig tree bowls, but I'm going to assume that that means St. John's are holding. So do I. Because if they were down, she would be getting her to play a similar bowl, wanting that metre of weight to turn it. It's protected those back bowls a little there. Crucial bowl here from Julie. Once again, similar to Kay. Very nice smooth she's, release with the left hand. She's wide though, mate. Won't get all the way back to Jack, but will it get in that hole? Quite. What it uh, has done is it's beaten a few of the other St. John's bowls. So if Dawn does try and play to this bowl. Tough one here for Dawn. There is a perfect shot through the gap at the front to the nearest fig tree bowl. However, she could be a couple of bowls wide and turn Julie's in, which is not a great result for her. Both the ladies there just discussing those options. See which one she favours. I still like the forehand, but Dawn might think there's too much turn in there. Well, obviously the perfect result is the forehand. As we said, between the gap at the front, we'll see that angle here in just a moment. She's going to go to her backhand side. She's going to say there, Jason, you'll see here now as the camera pans around, the gap on the forehand is a great result to get to the bowl. However, if she is a bowl or two off target, either way, she, on the wide side, potentially moves the fig tree bowl in closer, or on the narrow side, just turns her bowl out of yeah. the way and just opens up yeah. the angle for Kay to come in. She obviously thinks she's got the shot. I believe so. So Kay will be trying to find that gap. Just resting on her own bowl and dropping down. He's on a good line here. She just... Well, that's catching the front and potentially bringing it right into shot. Will it touch the jack? Well, it hasn't. Well. So it is two to St. John's. Decision time. There we go. Dawn saying... Well, Kay might have done herself a favour there as well. Just giving herself a bit more of a look, and that bowl's pretty much jack high. It's probably a little easier to play now. It's not simple, but... Well, the tough thing for Kay, though, I'm going to call that bowl 
two thirds to three quarters of a bowl in front of Jack High. She gets the outside of the bowl onto the jacket. St. John's over to the right. Three down. If she gets the bowl through her own bowl just behind the shot, it's so, not great for her either. Dorney so. not wanting to cross here. Yeah. Get to that other St. John's bowl. That <coughs> is a typical Lee Stinson draw shot. Absolutely nowhere near the jack. Giving yourself wraps, mate. Well, I've now been talking to the wet. We're all the selectors lately. They reckon that's one of his good ones. That's what I said, yeah. Typical bowl of mine. Nowhere near it. No, no, not typical. That's one of your good ones. Okay. It's okay. Two it down. is that port. However, like we said, this shot bowl is in front of Jack High. So all care needs to be taken here on the angle that she makes contact with. There's a huge bowl in the context of this match, too. We assume two down. She's it's going nice a lot more firm. positive. Well, Julie's bowl on the side may work oh, in. No, it's going to go by. Wow. And shoved it wide. Let's assume it's two to St. John's Park, and that will have us out 19-15, and that's confirmed now by the players. Yep. Two ends to play. If you're in the Central West region tomorrow, we have some local media coverage taking place. Local Triple M Network and also ABC Central West and Western Plains broadcasting some bowls coverage tomorrow. And so that, that's Triple M Radio Network, not, uh, not Jason. No, not Jason. Triple M Radio, 93.5 FM in, your, in the local area. I'll be doing a live outside broadcast here at Club Dubbo tomorrow. Great to see Bowles getting featured in mainstream media. Back to the action, 19.15. That's a very good opener from Natasha Russell. It's been a good end to the day. Five great finals, plenty of people around supporting all the clubs, singles players arriving, practicing on the third green here at the club. Heard plenty of reports of people over at Macquarie and North Dubbo Sporties practicing for tomorrow, getting a feel for conditions. Plenty of others have done that practice and just working on hydration methods for the next 12 hours, getting themselves ready for the morning. It's all about preparation, Jason, isn't it? Most definitely. There's a lot of preparation happening in the in the club at the moment, I tell you. There is a lot of people in here. Uh, great to see. If you're unaware, this is the first year of a three-year, non-consecutive year contract out here at Dubbo for the state championships. We will return to Dubbo in 2026 and 2028. Julie, Julie oh, let's get the chalk out. Beautifully, just what Fig Tree needed. Chalk the bowl, holding possibly two. Look at the replay like this. Left hand, forehand, right of screen, coming down, perfect weight, all the way up to the jacket. Here it goes. Two shots. You keep that up, mate. You will be calling... This golden slipper this weekend, I reckon. Racing. <laughs> <laughs> a little grimace from Dawn upon release there. I'm sure she was completely happy with that, She's and it is here. short. Yep. And characteristic, but... Player's body language always the best guide. She will adjust. Yeah, she dropped a metre. Yeah, a little St. John's pocket in the background of cheer squad. State mixed pairs champion Thomas Webb. Our senior women's triples champion Marianne Parcell in the background. Okay, Marianne looking to count there. Just up and over that bowl. One roll. Yeah, Thank you. Very, Great shot. very good. That's That head's becoming very, very uh, favourable for Fig Tree. 
N19, but, well, sorry, N number 20, 19 ends played. St. John's Park, Dawn Hayne would we love to draw the, a shot, but she's happy class. with That's two right. down at a maximum, one down. We know many. the class. She has got second wood. Wow. Half a bowl wider, she need draws the shot. Well, she does draw the shot. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect weight. Is is Kay maybe thinking of um, trying to sit Dawn through? I think so. Yeah. Wait to the T, just past centre of the bowl, turns it three or four rolls, missing just wide, getting to the back of the rink yourself. If you're a bit tight. Double chance here. So we just lost our camera work there for a moment. We'll be back with you with that in a sec. So just around the greens, as Joe the cameraman just takes a slight break, you can see Coromel 19, Cabramatta 16, two ends to go there in the senior men's. There's graphics team, look at that on, on screen. Our latest promotion sounds like you're local. Get all those assets on the Bowls New South Wales website. Search box down the bottom, a lawn bowls club near me. Put in your local area and get down to your local. If it's not your time to take up the sport just yet, at least get to the club, have a look, become a social member, and we'll get you on the greens at some point in the future. As Kay, there we go. Thanks, Joe. Back to the action. As we said, wait just past the tee. Can she get this bowl perfectly, Jason? Well, look at this. Up through. Up through. Turns to the jack, nice. and she's made a shot. The St. John's Park bowl leaning. This and is precarious for the team from St. John's. You saw the call from Dawn there. Draw to your own bowl, turn it in for shot, get the edge of it and run in. I don't need to do anything all that fancy. Get the edge and they'll come in beautifully. Just joining us, just an end and a half to go here. Women's pairs action. A bit of overtime coverage for the team. The men's pairs concluded. Mount Lewis getting the better of Engadine in that final. Well, Dawn begging this one in. Down on one knee. Natasha Russell off Inside the ball. Inside edge. That's that, a brilliant yeah, ball. Might be shot. Second. But... It's still on there at the moment. You can see the call from Cave. She gets the last bowl played from Natasha. That's the second shot. She gets that one first. She can still remove both bowls. This is a great opportunity for Fig Tree. I know they're holding one, but do you really want to be three behind without last bowl going into the last end? Well, angles. What's she done here? Wow. Well, that's two for now, and uh, ladies from St. John's need to be careful. You can just see the weight Dawn wants. Like, don't want to overplay this and remove one of their bowls. So much the same kind of speed, maybe a fraction more for Natasha. Well, urging that one up is Dawn. Not happy. So still a chance here. Yeah, I like this call from Kate. I'm sure she can see an opportunity later on in the end to change the angles and the setup of how it's situated. Doesn't need to play that shot yet. Holding two. Get a bowl to the back of the rink. Give yourself a chance to score two somewhere else. It's swinging home. Well, it's going to find the gap. Yep, gets right through. That's the deepest bowl on the green. Got into the home that she wanted. Yeah, so holding two. Uh, fig tree. Skips bowls to come. Well, there is a perfect shot there for Dawn. Just to part the seas. Squeeze yeah. just between yeah. those two shot bowls. And so there is a danger though. She does get the second shot. The one nearer to Jack High across. Won't be ideal for her. Okay, we'll have an opportunity later on for a huge count. 
weight critical with this one from Heyman. So she's fairly positive by the look of that, Lee. She is. Just under the grass. What's going to happen with contact here at the front? Yes, that is going well, to be going to feather a bowl up. And it's made it even better for Kay. Well, yep. huge opportunity. Do you have two goes at it, Kay? We'll leave it for your last. You see, Lee's the one asking, do you have two goes at it? I, I'm saying I have to have two goes at it. Yeah. Well, I the think only reason for asking if she plays it with this one, Dawn switches to the forehand yeah. and has a, a bit of a target, although there is a short bowl blocking the firm runner. I she like can almost squeeze through here, this herself. Forehand, metre and a half of weight. Gets her own bowl, Jack High. Balls. She can get a great result. Well, just got to come back, but if she gets that onto good. the other... Yes, played it well. What a shot. Got it out. Man. That's three. That is three. At least three. And a chance for more. And she's removed one of the two nearest St. John's bowls, so I'm going to call it three shots only at the moment to Fig Tree. However, St. John's there with fourth. Fig Tree with the fifth, sixth, and probably seventh closest bowl to the Jacks. So Dawn can't afford that bowl, light blue bowl nearest the centre line. That is their closest. Can't afford to remove that. So I think where she's standing maybe the angle she looks at. The swinging weight on the forehand to remove a few bowls. Uh, whether it's more full draw to that bowl of K's just passed and dropped down for Either shot or second shot. Time will tell. Yeah, I'm Brilliantly undecided. played head here, wasn't it, from Julian K? Yeah. They've played I'm playing perfectly. the forehand here, Lee, myself. Oh, 100% it's a forehand shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. no real wins on the backhand. There's some scary results there. So, forehand it is. Pick your weight, Dawn. It's just that full draw option. Trying to get to the jack. Oh, that's catching front bowls. How thin are you getting contact? Well, very thin, up, down, and... Well, couldn't have got a better result with that slide. Well, look at this angle here. Kay will be on a forehand again. Shot bowl on the jack. Can go as small as 30 centimetres past. Can get through. There it is. Thanks, Kay, for pointing that out. Yeah. Shot bowl lift up and over onto the jack is four. Comes a bit further, you still hold. Let's wait to pen it. She doesn't want to be too hard. That jack could actually hit back bowl and bounce back. Depending on the angles. Well, depending on how many holding too. If you're holding three, uh, you don't bother. You uh, back yourself to get one on the last end or two. Yeah, no, I can promise you it's not three at the moment. It is one or two. Lift the bowl up and over. Came around. Former Scottish international, wealth of experience, steadies herself on the mat. Pre shot routine as ever, nice and deliberate, up on the toes, arm extension out, beautiful release. And okay, well, it's quicker than intended. Is there an angle where she works her way back to the jack? Oh, Oh, she's turned Alderson one of the... John's, and that is one. We never know what it was. St. John's will be happy getting out of that. Well, it may have only been one to start with, so... Absolutely, Jace. They'll be ecstatic with that result. Two yeah. or three bowls ago, that shaped up as whoa, 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 a potentially lead-changing end. Yeah, it, it was, so... As it sits, they now hold a three-shot lead with see, the last bowl. See a slight grin there on Dorney's face as she walks back to pick up a water bowl. She knows she got out of that end pretty lightly, I think. <clears throat> Just a reminder about what's happened so far here this afternoon at Club Dubbo. Our open reserve triples... Pairs. Open reserve pairs. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was um, triples with a man short, wasn't it, in the uh, in the open reserve. That went to Cabramatta over Bar Beach. Our senior ladies, victory to South Tamworth over Foster. Our state men's pairs. Winners there, Mount Lewis over Engadine. Two games still in action. 
The one you see on screen at the moment. St. John's 1916 in front of Fig Tree and the State Ladies Pairs. It's been a very, very good game. And an update to follow in just a moment. Leeds just working out the shots on the 20th end of the senior men's pairs. They have one end to go. It's Coromel now, 19-17 in front of Cabramatta. What better way to spend a Friday afternoon down at your local watching the bowls as Natasha draws just centimetres away with her open up. And we'll just get our technical team here in the background to have a quick look at tomorrow's schedule. This may be our last end of coverage unless it's a three shot end to Fig Tree. So Julie wanting to get up or past, that helps. Her weight was pretty good, yep. Yeah, no, I'm happy with that. If I'm supporting Fig Tree, that's a good bowl. You see where Dawn wanted to be half a metre to a metre past the jack. Okay, Natasha just wanting to get just in behind this head now. She's got that one in front. Yeah, you see Dawny wa really wanting to get that push through. But yeah, we look to our rink coverage for tomorrow. We just about had it up on screen there. With you in a moment. Our team are doing a fantastic job in the background, Jason, at the hey, moment. The A team, mate. The, the A team. The graphics, the production. Yeah. Look, even a little shout out to us as commentators. We're going okay for a Friday. Oh yeah, it's Friday afternoon. You know we're going all right. Putting in the big hours, mate. <laughs> That's uh, really enjoying bringing this extra coverage to all our members and viewers out there. It has been a sensational game. I obviously, if you're following the live scores while we were streaming the men's, you would have seen it was tight all the way. Oh, Kay, this came around onto the round gets it neat. Wow. Great shot. We know that Kay needs at least three this end. And those front bowls, the four lead bowls, are now out of the game in terms of scoring. They may provide some blockers down the track, but none of those bowls are going to yeah, count in the scoring. Look at this. She's just got to hold on. This is brilliant. Oh, she got the hole. Well, Jason, you've uh, <laughs> talked that one out of getting shot. <laughs> Okay, big opportunity here. You know that Dawn's not going to be far away. Can she close this off? This would be a great time to draw a front touch up. Oh, for sure. You wouldn't want to leave anything jack high wide, in all honesty. No, ideally not. You obviously need to get a close one. If it finishes yeah. there, so be it. But Kay, this will come all the way back. Trying to saw. push it up further. Dawny's oh. hook, and that's going to hook in a really good position. That's count. two. Yeah, it is two. Quite sure that that second one's going to be near enough at the conclusion. Dawn quick again here by her body language. Oh, how good is this lady feeling? This was yes. quick out of the hand by, well, wow, not even. It was right on, right <laughs> on point. And there you go. There you go. We'll hand over to our co-commentator Andrew Lynn to talk you through tomorrow's state of play in singles. Tomorrow, round one, eight thirty a.m. Jack McShane up against Jay Bruce. That's Marylands and Malua Bay. Round two, Lemby Yadabatu from St George's Basin up against Julie Gooden of Wagarara Cell. And our third time slot, Greg Keft of Port City, playing Ray Pierce of Tarrant Point. What an exciting day that shapes up to be tomorrow. The single. Hope you can join us for the singles, the big event. Yeah, singles events, always the one that uh, our viewers and, and players love to play. It's that individual glory, you know. Um. Oh, Julie missing with line and weight there. And we've got the big day Sunday, making use of daylight saving. We get underway at 8.30am with the women's semi-final. We will immediately follow that with the men's semi-final. We'll have a small break to uh, move cameras, perhaps, and get underway with the women's final, and then back-to-back -back men's final. Finals day, Sunday finals day. So and then we back that up on Monday morning with the senior men's singles final. I see here Julie 
There's three bowls left here for Fig Tree to play. This one and two more from Skip came around, yeah. and they need at least three. So this bowl in Julie's hand. Get up there. Oh, that's dropped in a hard spot now. And you can see K. Moran turn around. She knows it's in a hard spot. Now, looking at how it's set up at the moment, I don't think K can get the shot bowl out without the jack. So she can yes, work Julie's right. last bowl into the head. And if this comes into where Dawn asked for it, she would like it to push past there. Okay, so let's have a look at this. It's shot bowl to St. John's Park. Second, third, and fourth. Those other shorter bowls all belong to Fig Tree. Don't think Kay can play the weight to get through the gap and bend to get enough of the shot bowl without making contact with the jack herself. I think her best chance for the three is Julie's last one. The one right of centre. Edge of that across onto the shot bowl to stay there for three. Be no target for Dawn if it becomes that. Because a kill is really hard as well. Nearly out of the equation when you look at that setup. Jack through is no good for her. As you said, she needs three and only two bowls remaining and no bowls passed. So it came around. Uh, solid weight. She's out there to that bowl, as Lee well, was just mentioning. She's going to get the jack. She uh, gets anything. So oh! That makes it a little bit harder now, too. That's actually knocked it out. Yeah, what she's done is she's probably now not got the three seconds anymore. No. So St. John's with fourth shot. Team from Fig Tree. Only the one bolt passed. I'm not seeing anything else other than a dead end as an Dorney option. could be. This is going to block some of these Turn that gaps. over. Come across there. Difficult shot here, but... Okay, you need to find all the strength you've got here and go really firm through the front. I think the bowl in her hand, she's got to make count as well, though. Yeah, absolutely. She... Can she get enough of that bend to get to the inside bowl to turn it yeah. on to Jack? Yeah. Quite possibly can. Will be tough. Tough shot. Yeah, down that, that bowl in front of the short one, you'll see as Julie just steps back for us. Very hard to get enough of the Jack to kill it too. That's, yeah. yeah I think that might be the only... Yeah. yeah Got to pick a chance here. <clears throat> that she can't play both options at the same time. She, only needs to, she won't get the three-shot result with that firm weight to kill it, and she won't be able to kill it with the weight she's trying to play to, to push that three. bowl through the other shot bowl and stay for three. Yep. So she <coughs> needs to be confident in her mind of which one she's going for. Are you going for a kill and replaying this end? Or are you trying to play a few metres of weight, bowl to bowl and stay for three, That's and hope Dawn misses so you go to an extra end? Well, Dawn doesn't have any more to go. Oh, I'm sorry, Lee. Yes, she does. She doesn't have any apart from a fourth bowl left. That's the only one she's got left. It's okay. It's the kill option. <laughs> she's making contact, trying to rattle at the front. Let's what's going to happen. Bowls are moving forward, and it's going to be St. John's holding on. Wow. So, Natasha Russell, Dawn Heyman. What a great finish to the game. Super final. We'll keep coverage rolling for just a moment. As we've got our winner, it's St. John's Park, 20 shots to 16. We look across the green at our senior men's game. Eric Johannes trying to draw up. There's, I believe, one ball left from each of the two skips. Jason, can you see what pattern that ball is? Is that one of the tricolour bowls? It is. And I, that's John Green. That's a tricolour. So that's a caramel bowl. At the front, as we look down on green, have you seen in the background there, Dawn Heyman is absolutely pumped, and no doubt that will feature in the coverage tomorrow via our local media that Dawn's undefeated throughout the course of the event. Three events played, 16 matches played, three events won and 16 victories. And for Dawn, there's just another five games to go for another <laughs> title. I can see our presentation MC in the background just writing down all the winners and runners-up names as we speak. Just jotting those down for the presentation.
It'll take place in the club in just a few moments. We have Holes New South Wales director John Ellison on site to conduct presentations. We know that Arthur from Cabramatta stepped onto the mat to play his last bowl. I think Eric Johannes does have another bowl to follow should he need to play it. As there's weight through the front, we'll try and get you any action. There is bowls moving forward, and that's not going to be enough. Yep. So players are shaking hands in our senior men's final. It's a victory to Coromel. John Green and Eric Johannes, victorious 20 shots to 17 over Gary Corey and Arthur Preece from Cabramatta. We'll round out our coverage there. Well done to both Jason Pinnick and Andrew Lynn. Big effort this afternoon. Cameras moving around. We caught an extra few ends and we're able to provide you all five winners of the pairs disciplines at the Bowles New South Wales 23-24 State Championships. We hope you've enjoyed the coverage. We're back on air on Bowles New South Wales YouTube and Facebook platforms from 8.30am tomorrow morning with round one of the state men's singles competition.